played 300 Days of Stardew Valley Expanded, Joja Edition. Here are all 300 days of my expanded Joja run from parsnips to perfection in one big mega movie. As I've said before, I love having extra long videos on in the background whilst I do work or house chores or for studying back in the day. The full list of mods will be listed in the description, and if you haven't seen the individual videos before, I'll be explaining the rules of my challenge and the little backstory of my farmer in the first video. This isn't just any Joja run. I added in some fun little twists, but without further ado, please do hit the like and subscribe button and enjoy. I played 100 Days of Stardew Valley Expanded, Joja Edition. This is going to be my first ever Joja run, and I thought it would be fun once again to use the Expanded mod, because I know that this adds a good amount to the story of Joja than just buying those bundles. This time, I wanted to add a little backstory to my farmer, but before I get into that, I'd love if you could like and subscribe. This style of video takes many hours to make and your support would help a ton. Now, here's that story. A Joja employee was having a particularly bad day at work. We all get them, you know what I mean. The ones that give you the urge for change, greener pastures and whatnot. This is the time that felt right to open that sealed envelope Grandpa gave her all those years ago. She had a good read to find out his farm had been left to her, and right there and then she decided to quit her job and go for it. She packed up a city apartment and donated most of her belongings, but when it was time to move, the fear and regret set in at the prospect of leaving the comfort of the city, as well as the guaranteed, albeit modest, income from Joja Corp. After all, she didn't hate working for the company, she was just having a really bad day. But alas, it was too late. A new person was ready to move into her apartment for their own fresh start. She'd bet they'd even taken her job too. A little overwhelmed, she got on that bus, but when she arrived, she found out that Pelican Town has a Joja Mart too. So at least she could continue to support the corporation that meant so much to her, and have some of those home comforts too. This brings me to the rules and goals of this playthrough. Here's what we want to achieve in our first 100 days on Thriving Farm. I want to get 10 hearts with Morris. If we reach this, we'll unlock some Joja themed props and items. I want to upgrade the house at least once, the tiny little cabin just won't do. I want to fully complete the Joja route, because this is a Joja run after all. And finally, I want to make 1 million gold. This will unlock the ability for us to buy a tractor. I should clarify that the unlocks I add aren't part of the expander mod or anything. These are extra mods I'll add if we hit these goals. To add some challenge and fun though, we've got a couple of rules to live by. The first one, no shopping at other stores for most items. All my season stuff have got to come from Joja Mart, but services like buildings, upgrades and geodes are all fair game. I'll allow myself to buy animals too. The other two exceptions are backpacks because I have a loot goblin, and fishing rod upgrades because I suck at fishing and I need all the help I can get. I can also use the travelling merchant because she's a smuggler, she's not part of the rest of them. And I'll also allow myself to buy recipes and anything I need for perfection if there's no other way to get them. Our other rule is that we must drink every Joja Cola we obtain. It's our favourite after all. And if I forget at any point, I need to go spend my hard earned gold to buy some just to drink. All of the mods I use will be linked in the description, and without further ado, let's get started! As is customary on day one, I picked up my parsnips and cleared a little space to plant them. I spent most of my energy on chopping down trees, being sure to plant any mixed seeds I could find. With my energy empty, it was time to introduce myself to all the new neighbours. Not forgetting to stop at Joja Mart for seeds of course, which is a good time to mention I added a clearance bin mod, which mostly contains rip-offs. But today, I got so lucky! One gold strawberry seeds on my first day! I couldn't believe my eyes, I bought them all because it's usually Pierre who sells them on spring 13th and we won't be giving him our money. I got to most of the villagers by the end of the day and made sure to leave enough time to plant those strawberries in a pattern to allow for basic sprinklers in the future. Before going to sleep, I rearranged the house to get my bed closer to the door. This will save a lot of passing out later on, and that night we got level 1 foraging. Day 2 started with water in my crops. Most days will start like this, but to prevent it getting repetitive, just assume I do it from now on. It was also Morris's birthday. I didn't have a chance to get him anything good, so I raided the clearance bin for a gold summer spangle, which he thought was just okay. It was better than nothing, alright? <laughs> I went to pick up my fishing rod, skipping the cutscene having seen it a million times, and grabbed myself a training rod too to help me level. I did my first bit of fishing on the bridge just north of the beach, because I accepted a request to catch three sunfish. A few in-game hours later, I caught my third sunfish and hit level 1 fishing, wasting no time in going to ask for my reward. That evening, I met Sebastian, who was the last one I had to meet, and gave him a gift to finish that quest too. 
Then I invested a good amount of my remaining money into another gold summer spangle which I'll be giving to Caroline. A rainy day 3 meant I had more energy available to clear up the farm, but I did also go for a bit of foraging in the hopes of gathering enough to craft some wild seeds. I managed to make 20, and took advantage of the rain to plant them. I got a cutscene with Claire who was sleepy at work whilst on my way to say hello to Morris for the day. Then got an early night to conserve food to use in the mines. On day 4, a crow had stolen one of my precious parsnips. I went to replace it with a mixed seed, but misclicked and immediately destroyed it instead of watering it. Now that Pierre's was open, I could give Caroline that gold summer spangle, which meant I got her to a full heart already, halfway to tea saplings. I actually ended up fishing for a while at a bubble spot up by the mountain lake, looking for a carp to give to Sophia, and on my way over to her, I got a cutscene with Andy saying he'd be sending me some strawberry seeds in the mail, even more early strawberries. I handed over the carp to Sophia, then did a bit more fishing down at the beach. I know, can you believe it? Clint came to give me the furnace recipe on day 5 as I got my first piece of copper ore yesterday. I skipped that cutscene because we don't have time for Clint before collecting my strawberry seeds from the mail and harvesting my first parsnips. This got us level 1 farming! We got the community centre cutscene today, but we skipped that rubbish because it's going to make us a lovely warehouse. In a quick trip to Jojima, I bought a couple of each seed till my backpack got full planting them in the space where the parsnips were, then it was time for my first day in the mines. It didn't take me all that long to reach level 10 where I received a wooden blade, but that's where I left it for the day because I forgot to bring a chest up here to store all of my loot. Instead, it was an evening of chopping loads of wood and popping up to the community centre to read the weird plaque so we can trigger the mail from the wizard. On day 6, I opened my first geode and started restoring the museum's stolen collection. I collected my first reward of cauliflower seeds, and later got the melon seeds too. I presented Morris with the spare earth crystal I had, then waited outside Caroline's room for her to leave so I could gift her a daffodil. I planted those cauliflowers and crafted my first scarecrows, then since it was a Saturday I decided to go foraging, stopping in at the wizards on the way. Of course, we skipped that cutscene. Forest spirits, schmorris spirits. I found a decent amount of spring onions today, which will come in handy for the mines, then carried on through West Sendersap where I found a forest sword. This will be a huge upgrade. By the night time, I managed to make another 30 forage seeds, which I planted first thing on day 7. I went to the travelling cart for the first time and bought a large egg, but I honestly have no idea why I did that, because all I did was take it home to plonk it in a chest, and that is where it will live for the rest of these 100 days. I explored some of the caves and minecarts on my farm, which eventually led me to a mineral cave, where I could pick up geodes and museum pieces. It was Lewis's birthday today, so I gave him a farm fresh potato before locating Caroline to give her another daffodil. Day 8 was a good luck day, so I brought a chest to leave up by the mines ready for a day of spelunking. In my descent I also made sure to pick up any fibre I came across in prep for tea saplings, and even got lucky enough to get my first ancient seed, which of course I had to make room for. I picked up two pairs of shoes which I had to decide between and ended up slipping on the sneakers, and in yet another stroke of good luck, I was blocked in by a huge amount of copper on floor 23. This had shaped up to be one of my best early game mining days, gaining 66 copper, 13 coal, 57 fibre and a bunch of other stuff, and I levelled up combat and mining. I got my first strawberries on day 9. It was so exciting to have these before the egg festival, but I did end up saving most of them until I could get preserves jars. I gave Caroline yet another daffodil, and had a quick chat with her as well. This got us so close to two hearts, so I'll be talking to her each day until we get there. Since I had some stuff to donate, I opened more geodes till I ran out of money, then took them straight to the museum on the long mission to free Gunther from behind his desk. We had a good few rewards, but most importantly, the ancient seed, which I shoved in the ground immediately. When it comes to wine, I'm usually team starfruit, but since we can't buy the seeds from Sandy, I'll be opting to use ancient fruit this time. The rest of the afternoon was spent in the mines to gather copper and to get deeper through the floors, and thankfully I made it to floor 40 by the end of the day. On day 10, Marnie greeted me with a cat to adopt, and named it Cola after a favourite beverage. The first lot of forage was ready, getting us enough XP for foraging level 3. From these, I could make 60 more forage seeds, replanting as many as would fit in the spaces. I didn't plant them all because I was sick of the watering. I dropped an earth crystal to Morris, then was at Clint's again for more geodes for the museum, and whilst I was there I gave Vincent a daffodil for his birthday. On day 11, Andy was at my door here to warn me about crows. I guess he didn't notice the scarecrows he would have walked past to get here? I grabbed Robin's lost axe which I gave straight back to her for the 250 gold reward, 
Then since it was a bad luck day, the afternoon was spent clearing more of the messy farm. But I did get around to making my first tree tappers in prep for bee houses and kegs. We hit level 2 farming from tulips that night. Yay sprinklers! On day 12, I went to say hello to Caroline and hit two hearts. Which means we get the tea room cutscene. I'd never actually watched through this before and let's just say it was... Uh... An experience. With that nonsense out the way, this was to be a mining day as we needed lots of iron for all those sprinklers. I ducked out around 5pm as I was out of food and energy, with a modest amount of iron for now, but at least it was more than none. On day 13 we had our second harvest of strawberries, which was fun because this is usually the day I'd only just be planting them. We also got that tea sapling recipe in the mail, but I didn't make any yet because it's festival time. I used the opportunity to talk to everyone I could before starting their egg hunt. I felt ready to defeat Abigail, but to be honest, this egg hunt wasn't my best performance, especially compared to recently, but I still managed a decent 9 eggs, taking home that victory straw hat. Day 14 greeted us with our next batch of forageables, and again, I just replanted in the available spaces. This is the day I made my first tea saplings, crafting 34 of them before running out of resources. I also crafted my first sprinklers today, excited for any amount less watering. Then I went to check the travelling merchant who was selling some cheese. This was important for shipping, since I wasn't going to buy the milk pail from Marnie, I needed this for perfection. It was so expensive though. I dropped off a birthday daffodil to Haley on my way up to the mines as we were still on the sprinkler grind, and we were lucky enough to get our first coffee bean. Even though this was a pretty productive day, I passed out on floor 59. Spiral floors are the worst. On the bright side, we made 17 grand from those tea saplings, so now we're really getting going with the money making. On day 15, I gave Olivia a congratulatory topaz for making it another revolution around the sun. From there, I headed to Jojima and found some bargain sunflower seeds in the sale bin, taking them all to save for summer. This was a good day for Morris, he got a free earth crystal, and I did plan to buy the Jojima membership but forgot and left, triggering a Morris cutscene. He seemed in a particularly good mood, greeting all the townies, even stopping to wish Pierre well. Apparently, he was finally getting some recognition from his boss. Good for you, Morris. And I was about to make his day even better and buy the last membership needed to turn that dilapidated community centre into a wonderful Jojo warehouse. It was salmonberry season, but I ignored that for now and asked Clint to upgrade our pickaxe because the mines were becoming a pain. Then I suddenly remembered I needed to go home and plant that coffee bean. I foraged salmonberries into the night when I passed Morris who gave me a gold bar as an advanced discount on my next Jojo purchase. How kind! I sprinted home to grab an earth crystal as a thank you before he got on the bus, completely forgetting I already gave him one today. On day 16 I picked salmon berries on my way to the mines. I forgot I had no energy and exhausted myself in an artifact spot, getting that lost book cutscene to add insult to injury. Ugh. I dropped into the mines anyway with an aim of levelling up combat so we don't get an energy penalty tomorrow, but I was also here to find fibre 2 for those sweet sweet tea saplings, and that doesn't cost any energy. I successfully hit that level up before gratefully receiving my initiation into the Adventurers Guild. I also happened upon another ancient seed which I gave a new home on my farm. Then the rest of the day was spent gathering berries as we are constantly out of energy. We were blessed with some rain on day 17 as well as a pretty sizeable harvest of cauliflower, strawberries and forage. I replanted the forage once again and collected my copper pickaxe from Clint which I carried straight up to the mines to try and make more progress. Today I found my first diamond, and got through 10 floors to number 65 by midnight, deciding to take my leave since I wanted to save on medical bills. My morning workout on day 18 was chopping down loads of trees. Pam got a daffodil for her birthday, then I found out that Morris was having an irresistible 50% off sale at Jojomart. Apparently I was too stunned to pick myself up a coupon though. Hopefully I made Pierre feel better because today I bought the first backpack upgrade, being one of the few times he'd actually get my money. As soon as I came out of the shop, Andy was screaming the entire town down. In an attempt to be a good citizen, I agreed to check on Andy, so I stopped in at his house on my salmonberry rounds, but he wasn't home and I couldn't find him anywhere. I forgot about that for now to take advantage of the last day of salmonberries. On day 19, Jody asked me for a cauliflower, and being a Friday, we checked the travelling merchant who had literally nothing of interest. Like the cheese, I was also looking for one of each milk and the goat's cheese for shipping, so I'll be here every chance I get. I waited out in the rain for Jodie to unlock her door and almost accidentally ate the goods, but luckily managed to give it to her for the 350 gold. I walked up to Robbins to ask for a coupe then changed my mind realising my money would be better spent on the minecarts at this point, even if I was still a few grand off. 
In that case, back to the mines because sprinklers. I left at floor 75 with plans to take home some of the loot I'd gotten because some of it would need donating to the museum. Shane got a salmon berry for his birthday on day 20, then it was yet another day in the mines, making our way up to the gold floors, where we got the shadow dagger, a decent upgrade, followed by an even better upgrade of the obsidian edge on floor 90. Even with that progress, I made it home with enough time to place more sprinklers, plant another coffee bean, and make it to bed with mere seconds to spare. That night, we picked the minor profession, leveled up combat, and made nearly no gold. However, to my surprise, that was still enough to get us over the threshold to have Demetrius set up our cave. Since I didn't need any fruit for the community centre, I went with the mushroom cave as a reliable energy source. It was another harvest day, look at all those goodies. We got a farming level 2. With what I gathered, I could make another 33 tea saplings, so that's the minecart unlock secured for tomorrow, with plenty of money left over for some kind of expensive milk from the travelling merchant, and then I bet you can guess what I did for the rest of the day. If you guess mining, you are correct. It took quite a bit to get to floor 99, but it wasn't long before I got fed up with the spiral floor and plopped down the staircase to secure our first star drop. Ah yes, the sweet sweet taste of Joja Corp. I made it all the way to floor 110, receiving a sword that's actually worse. I guess I'll just sell it. From this day's levels, I unlocked the preserves jar, chose the gatherer profession, and unlocked the bomb recipe. On day 22, I got a free green bean from the community garden from Leah, which I ate and apparently regurgitated whole. I was going to give it to Morris, but that would be gross, so he got a salmon berry instead. As soon as Joe Jamar opened, I checked the clearance bin and picked up spring seeds for some extra tea sapling profit, then spent 15,000 gold on the minecarts. The rest of this day was spent in the mines for the... I've lost count of how many days I've been doing this now, but I promise at some point we do do other stuff. For now, I just needed the ores for sprinklers and fibre for tea saplings. I passed out right by the farm, dreaming of the sounds of the minecarts being fixed, and having reached level 5 combat, I picked the fighter profession. First thing on day 23, I handed in a copper gathering quest to Clint, and got him to open some geodes. We got a good amount of stuff to donate to the museum on our quest to free Gunther, and he seemed grateful for our efforts, handing us a few rewards. I then near bankrupted myself for the final backpack upgrade. This loot goblin cannot be stopped. I popped off home to fill my house with those museum rewards, made another 20 tea saplings to sell, then hung out on the farm to make enough sprinklers to mostly not have to water stuff anymore. I wanted to work on friendship with the wizard, so I went to see how he's doing but he gave us the saddest dialogue for us having chosen the Joja route. I took that as my cue to leave. We had a bit better luck with Andy, who gladly accepted a salmon berry for his birthday. On day 24, I picked my last set of forage and chopped down trees whilst waiting for the flower dance to start. As soon as it did, I bought the tub of flowers recipe and the rare crow as I needed them for perfection. I made sure to speak to everyone for the friendship points, then received the official initiation of every Stardew save the humiliation of being rejected for the flower dance. In my case, from more than one person. <sighs> no squats for us this year. On day 25, I grabbed my last set of strawberries for the year, then spent the entire morning clearing land for resources and to tidy things up. That afternoon, I visited Clint to request a steel pickaxe upgrade and shared some spare copper with Sophia for a town board quest, mainly for the friendship boost. Back on the farm, I thought it was time to start adding paths. And don't worry, that tree will be moved at some point. I decided on this save, I wanted to try decorating as I go. Day 26 was when I finally remembered to make my first preserves jars, although I still seem to have forgotten to actually make any jelly. I picked up a rare seed to save for fall, then gave a yet another daffodil as a birthday gift, which seems to be a theme this spring. I stole some tea leaves from Caroline to ship, then planned to fish for the rest of the day as I was close to level 2. I was happy to see this bubble spot, but it disappeared shortly after I cast my line. It only took me a few minutes to get bored of fishing, so I left to donate a couple more artefacts that I found that day. My rare trip to the beach reminded me I hadn't repaired that bridge yet, so I took care of that for access to more pocket money and foraging XP. On day 27, I foraged on the beach until Clint's opened so that I could pick up my steel pickaxe. Emily and Haley were arguing over their house chores, so I suggested that this be Haley's one weekly job. It is Emily's birthday after all, and this seems to have settled things for now. After that bit of drama, Emily retreated to her room, so I had to wait outside for a while to give her a birthday gift. I went for my last bit of spring foraging, hitting level 6 that day, and collecting any fibre I could find in West Cindersap, then rounded off the day by chugging a beer with Shane on my way home. On day 28, the travelling merchant had a battery which I couldn't pass up. 
It was a decently lucky day, so I planned to spend the rest of the day in the mines gathering as many ores as I could for more sprinklers, amongst other important things. The best part of this day, though, was getting a prismatic shard from a dust sprite. What the... I was in shock for a while. This is the earliest I've ever got one. I then rushed back that night to play seven more sprinklers I just made in prep for the new season. Day 29, the first day of summer. I spent ages hoeing the ground whilst waiting for Jojama to open. On my way into town, I got a cutscene with Demetrius asking if I know where Stardew Valley got its name. So I just guessed space stuff and that was correct. I also picked up a copper axe I asked Clint for a couple of days ago, but with all that socialising done, it was seed time. My brain was saying no today because I missed strawberry seeds for one gold again. I think I was too focused on picking up a gift for Morris. I could have saved these for next year. Well, instead, I end up going with a couple of each crop and loads of melons and blueberries, then popped off home to get them all in the ground. I might have bit enough more than I can chew though because all those sprinkler spots filled up fast. This is what I get for not calculating things. I'll be needing to water all of these melons by hand every day until I hit farming level 6. On day 30, I really messed up. On this day, I donated a bunch of things to the museum, including my first prismatic shard. If you didn't know, this first one should have been saved to take to the desert and get the galaxy sword. You see, what happened is that I already tried to record this series once before. I'd done up to day 20, but between Dinkum and the release of Coral Island, I decided I was going to restart my playthrough and deleted all those recordings. I didn't delete the save though, and after all those other videos were done, I forgot I made that decision and carried on with the old save, playing all the way up to day 71 before realising I deleted the footage. This meant I had to start everything all over again, and of course by that point on there I'd already got the galaxy sword, so I thought it was safe to donate this prismatic shard. Yeah, uh, oops. <laughs> Clearly my absolute blunder was coming back to haunt me, and it's going to be some time before I realise my mistake. Blissfully unaware, I spent the rest of the day in the mines. On day 31, Susan was finally free so she came to introduce herself. After an uncomfortable amount of watering, I chopped a bunch of farm wood, then got a cutscene with the wizard, where I got caught checking out his books. This must have been a dream or something because nobody would catch me reading anything. He did say he might teach us magic later though, so that was kinda cool. On day 32, I cleared some space which will later be used for a tapper farm. I got a cutscene where Lewis was questioning Morris about Joja's practices, and he reminded him that everything Joja are doing are in compliance with the law. It's all fine! I asked Clint to upgrade my axe, then track down the birthday girl with a ruby, keeping up with gifting of many other townies too. After all the gifting, I went home to plant the acorns that I had in prep for oat resin for kegs. On day 33, the travelling merchant was selling nothing but disappointment. With the shorts quest now on our radar, I gave Marnie a diamond, then did her a favour by returning a lost jazz from the woods. I decided it was finally time for a fishing rod upgrade, and actually used it to fish for a while hanging out at this fishing spot. Unfortunately, it disappeared kinda quickly, so I left to find out that Emily was in need of Joja Cola. Of course, we were happy to share the deliciousness that is Joja Cola, so I bought a couple, cause you know, one for me too. Then, the evening was spent farming fibre in the mines. I gave Martin some jelly for his birthday which was on day 34. I took advantage of a bubble spot since I actually had my rod with me, but all the fish were too hard and the bubbles went away so I trashed that idea and grabbed my axe from Clint. I took it straight home to clear this little patch to set up my storage area. For now, I just floored it because I remembered there was a path blocked by hardwood on my farm. This led to my own personal hot spring which I was very excited about because I am constantly out of energy. This area also had a shortcut to the secret woods. Handy. I now had access to the hardwood, forageable and crop seeds that these woods had to offer, and all that fun stuff meant we reached level 7 foraging. It was also a decent money day, having made a good amount of tea saplings. On day 35, I carried on setting up my storage area because my chests were getting so messy. I didn't forget to check the travelling merchant, but apparently she forgot to bring anything actually good. This was a mines evening, spent predominantly farming coal. This was also the day I realised about the mistake with the prismatic shard. Oh, I'm an idiot. I left the mines at midnight to avoid the pass out penalty, having only gathered 17 coal. On day 36, I got a cashback mail from Pierre. Has he, like, not noticed I'm not shopping there? Flowers were starting to grow, so I made my first bee houses. Then, of course, as we went into town, we had to pet Dusty. We gave out a few gifts today. 
I gave a sweet pea to Morris, then bought a few tulips to give to some other people. I gave Sophia a bit of a fright, but then she gave me my first quality sprinkler, so I think we're good. Sophia actually sells sprinklers too, but we won't be allowed to buy them for this playthrough. I also met her friend Scarlett for the first time, but she seemed upset that I might have overheard some of the conversation, so I told her I heard nothing and gave her a tulip to cheer her up. Gus got one of my two diamonds for his birthday, then it was another evening in the mines farming for coal, and to chip away at that monster slayer goal. On day 37 I got round to the last bit of clear up on this field, and made some progress on some other parts of this massive farm too, meaning we gathered a decent amount of wood. On day 38 I gave Maru a strawberry for her birthday, and I gotta say, I think I'm doing pretty well with keeping up with all these birthdays. Lewis hired Clint to remove the boulder by the train station, but obviously it'll be us who does the dirty work. This explosive is going to take coal and iridium, but we don't have access to the desert yet, so that'll be our next big goal. From the couple of crops I harvested that day, I reached farming level 5, choosing the tiller profession, and made a little bit of gold from tea saplings. I got some melon seeds in the mail on day 39, but I decided to wait to plant these for now because I had more than enough watering. This was the day of the luau. I plopped in a gold quality purple mushroom to the pot that made a soup which was so good that the governor literally started vibrating. That soup was out of this world, although it's got mushrooms in it so I'll have to disagree. On day 40 we got our first storm forecast, so I crafted some lightning rods for batteries and for less likelihood that my crops get destroyed. I got that weird cutscene from Maru and Demetrius, but to keep hold on my friendship points I just said nothing. The reason I came up to Robbins was that I was going to ask for the house upgrade, but then thought better of it because I suddenly remembered I was saving up for the bus and we were so close to that goal now. To help with this, I went foraging at the beach and west in the sap. On day 41, my first batch of melons were ready. This was enough to get me level 6 farming. Quality sprinklers were in sight and I was so relieved. Actually, we also got level 7 farming too. I sold all the silver ones and most of the gold ones, with all the regular ones to be safe for jelly. I cleared out the mineral cave with plans to open my geodes, then I even tried to steal back my prismatic shard from the museum, but of course that didn't work. I donated enough stuff this day to be given one of the rare crows, then because it was Alex's birthday I gave him a frozen tear, which given that it was raining was probably kind of mean. I filled up some of the open spots with forage seeds, then jumped back into the mines for coal once again. I was greeted with the beautiful sight of blueberries on day 42, and the few forageables that were ready were enough to get level 7 foraging. As before, I shipped the quality ones and kept the basic ones for processing and gifts, before collecting my first set of batteries. As I'd been preparing the materials in advance, I had enough to make 16 sprinklers with more on the way. I headed to Joja Mart for seeds to fill out these spots, and came across Pam being an absolute Karen. Oh, and most importantly, I was here to pay for the bus repair, Skull Caverns is so close I can taste it. I burned through the rest of my gold on another set of melons, and after collecting some free resources from a passing train, I worked into the night getting all those seeds planted. On day 43, I badgered Pam to hurry up to the bus for my first day in Skull Caverns. I made use of the desert trader given she was after items and not money. Then I unlocked that door and got going. This was shaping up to be an incredible first day. I picked up some yam seeds from my first treasure floor, a serpent spat out a rabbit's foot, then on an infested day 59 I got overwhelmed and died. Thankfully, because it was a good luck day, I only lost a thousand gold and not a single item. It was also pretty late by then, so we didn't really lose that much time either. On day 44 I got a mail from Mr Key, challenging me to get to floor 25 in Skull Caverns. Ah Mr Key, if you were as all seeing and knowing that we here you are, you'd have known I've already done this. I was having some pretty decent luck on the save, but we could always use more, so I took my rabbit's foot over to the Joja truck guy, only for him to not even acknowledge my existence. I guess we'll have to wait for the secret note. I dropped off the bomb materials to Clint, grateful that he shared with me some of his earnings, then returned to the desert, not for Skull Caverns, but to trade more stuff and prep for future runs, but also to go foraging whilst I was there, and to meet Sandy for the first time, even if we can't shop here. On day 45 I got a 10,000 gold reward for that progress in Skull Caverns. It was Sam's birthday, but since I can't get into his room yet, I spent a good portion of the day in the mines farming fibre. As I was leaving that afternoon, I got a cutscene with Marlon who wanted to introduce me to Krobus down in the sewers, entrusting me with my very own key so I can go and see them whenever I like. 
Sam was now in the saloon, but before I could hand over my gift, I had to hint at Pam to pay off her bar tab. Even though she seemed mad at first, thankfully she obliged. Then we decided to help Claire pay for our lunch. She works hard and deserves the salad she wants. With all those cutscenes out the way, I could give Sam his cactus fruit from the desert. He seemed to still be tired after repairing the bus that night, which we were very grateful for. But that's enough socialising for today, back to fibre farming. I made it home in time for bed, but it seems Clint was hellbent on awakening the entire town. Emily was here bright and early on day 46 to give me access to her sewing machine. This was a blueberry harvest day, enough to bring us to level 8 farming. Kegs are imminent. Now that my trees were starting to grow, I decorated the tapper farm a little with some fences and paths, then began clearing out this little area with plans to house my kegs here. On day 47 I made my first 5 kegs, but kept them closed for now because… lazy. It was Demetrius's birthday so he got a strawberry. No idea how that hasn't gone mouldy yet, or maybe it has, who knows. I bumped into a sad Sophia outside the doctor's office, so I asked if she wanted to pet Dusty with me, which seemed to help cheer her up, and it made the doggo happy too. The Joja clearance bin had some nice early fibre seeds for cheap, we could always do it more fibre. I also bought the winter seeds, but immediately regretted it when I realised that it took me below 35,000 gold, which was the amount I needed to pay for the greenhouse repair, so I sprinted over to Pierre's to sell back enough stuff to get that amount. Hello Morris, one greenhouse please. Back on the farm with a meagre 2 gold, I crafted some tea saplings to ship, then set off my first cups of coffee since I forgot earlier. I had a decent forage harvest on day 48. I turned as much as I could into seeds, replanting them in the available space then making 21 tea saplings before running out of fibre again. Being a good luck day, it would have been rude not to have gone to Skull Caverns, with a pretty early treasure floor containing some rain totems. And the first dino I killed dropped us an egg. I passed out on floor 75, hitting level 9 mining and making over 10 grand mainly from tea saplings. On day 49 I put away all of yesterday's goodies, then since it was another pretty good luck day I was back at it again. The reason I was going so hard in here was because I needed loads of iridium for upgrades and sprinklers, and because I was desperately looking for another prismatic shard, which thankfully I found that night. I wasn't taking any chances this time, and before I could figure I headed straight to the spot to get that galaxy sword. Since I still had a little bit of time, I refilled some supplies at the desert trader, then headed to bed so I could pick the blacksmith profession. Our halfway point began with a satisfying blueberry harvest. We dropped a melon to Demetrius to help with his research, then it was off to Jojamart where Morris was getting some attitude from his employees. I told them they should listen to him. They were not best pleased, but it was Morris's friendship that we're most interested in, and he seemed to be thankful for my assistance. What I actually came here for was the bridge repair. We've only got one project left now. Believe it or not, I spent the afternoon celebrating with some fishing, sticking around the lake till I hit level 4. I left to check out the summit because I completely forgot till now, picking up any forage the place had to offer. On day 51 I met Pam at work with some pale ale. Since she drank it right away, we won't be taking the bus today. I added some tappers to my resin farm, then cleared this log which led down to a path to something like my own secret woods with renewable hardwood and a surprise giant crop. I harvested that melon for the extra cash. I chopped as much hardwood as I could today to grind out foraging levels. I had a goal now of hitting level 10 foraging before blackberry season starts, because iridium quality blackberries are actually pretty decent. All the fibre from farm clearance meant we could make another 29 tea saplings, so we went to bed that night with a lovely 15,000 gold. On day 52 I finally came back for that house upgrade. It was time we got more space for activities. I headed down the pier in the pouring rain to visit Willy and give him an iridium bar for his birthday, then strolled right into Jojama around lunchtime to buy that last bundle. I am so pleased with the result of completing the Joja route before the end of summer. Filled with confidence, I spent the rest of the day smacking dust sprites. On day 53, George was asking for a hot pepper to rub on his knee. I did the rounds saying hello to my fellow farmers, then as I arrived at George's house I jumped on the opportunity of this bubble spot first. I soon realised George wouldn't appreciate waiting, so I went inside to hand him the pepper and came out to resume fishing. The bubble spot finally disappeared in the evening with just enough time for me to hit level 5 fishing. George actually reminded me to check out the quarry, but when I took the car over there I was met with a copper pan cutscene. I skipped this one too because I've seen it a million times now so that I could start clearing out the quarry. On day 54 I harvested my crops as quick as possible to stop them from getting too soggy, but what was really satisfying was slicing through all that fibre. 
I bought a load of radishes to sacrifice for holding the sprinkler spots for full, meaning I can save time and energy on hoeing and watering for the start of next season. Overnight, we gained access to crafting the seed maker and iridium sprinklers, and we made a decent profit from all them crops. Day 55 and my house was now upgraded, both in size and in looks. I also set up my first iridium sprinklers in prep for next season, then made the most of my last foraging Saturday of summer, also stopping to give gifts along the way. On day 56, I remembered to move my bed back closer to the door. Also, don't you just love the more Joja-esque interior? The travelling merchant had a decently priced seafoam pudding, which I bought on my way to the secret woods to grind for more foraging XP. I took a lunchtime dip in my hot springs because this was better than food. Then finally added my first sprinkler to the greenhouse, having completely forgotten that this farm map comes with one that's so much bigger. I'd been forgetting about the Joja clearance bin. Good thing I checked today because there were free strawberry seeds. Huh? I was so confused at first. I thought it was just a visual bug and the price wasn't showing, but nope, definitely free. I'll be taking them, thank you very much. I also grabbed the apple sapling because fruit trees do seem to be cheaper there, and of course it got planted in my greenhouse. I do love that this one has specific spots for the fruit trees. Looks like I missed this prompt for the festival, so I headed to bed completely forgetting about the moonlight jellies. On day 57, I tidied up withered crops whilst waiting for Jojamart to open. Similar to summer, I bought a few of each crop, then a good quantity of cranberries and a buttload of pumpkins. I had a few too many pumpkin seeds for my sprinklers, so I saved these for now, then continued with the mammoth task of clearing up this farm. On day 58, I picked a single ancient fruit to turn into seeds for the greenhouse. I made 10 more kegs and started filling up this area, but I'll wait for the other kegs to finish processing before I start anything new here. The special orders board was now fixed, so I went to pick out my first quest. Since I didn't have any chickens, I had to go with rock rejuvenation. Vincent caught me digging through the trash. Hopefully he didn't tell Penny because I was here to hand her a birthday gift. On my way out of the library, I witnessed Penny push George out of the way, and even though she was trying to help, I told her she really should have asked first. I jumped on some free mix seeds in the clearance bin today, then interrupt the exercise class to dump rocks on Emily because I wanted this request done nice and early. The rest of the day went on handing out coffee because I was trying to keep up effort with the friendships. This meant I could now retrieve Lewis's shorts. I stored them in a chest at home for now to decide how to present them to him later. Lastly, I finally remembered I didn't yet have the golden scythe, so I took a trip to the quarry mines to rectify that, and on my return home I got that cutscene with Linus. Gross. On day 59, I got a Best Neighbour award, as well as the sewing machine in the mail. And Marnie was asking for some amaranth. I threw down the sewing machine in the spare room of the house so I could take the minecart to Clint's and open all of my geodes, since Gunther is still trapped behind that desk. I got quite a few things to donate, but forgot to collect any rewards. That's alright though, because the trash blessed me with a beverage. The sale bin was selling fibre seeds again. I'll take any fibre I can get, with a bonus that they don't need watering. I asked Robin for a coop today since I could gather these animal drops without buying tools from Marnie, then chop wood through the evening, chipping away at the foraging level. Day 60 started with setting off some more pale ale and adding another fruit worth of seeds to my greenhouse. My crop is growing slowly but surely. This entire day was for working on my foraging level because blackberry season was coming up soon. That night we got a visit from Angelica, which meant on day 61 I could already harvest some sweet gem berries. And some other things too, but those or whatever, but it did mean I could fill these spots with those spare pumpkins. Marnie got the amaranth she requested. Then, as I was coming through town to find Elliot for his birthday, I finally got that cutscene for completing the Joja route. Bearing in mind, we finished the last project like nine days ago. I stopped Morris from being fired and received an exclusive Joja Cola vending machine, a daily supply of our favourite fizzy. We can't say no to that. I was also thankful it wasn't raining today, because that meant I could actually give Elliot his birthday gift. My soda machine got its rightful place in my kitchen, then it was back on the foraging level grind. We are so close now. On day 62, I dumped a cave carrot on Marnie's floor, then it was on to Willy's to drop off the boat materials because I was itching to get to Ginger Island. I brought Pierre some coffee, slightly out of guilt, and he questioned me about my funding of Joja's projects. I did feel kinda bad, but I was loyal to Joja, at least for this playthrough anyway. This was the day I hit level 10 foraging, with a couple of days to spare before blackberry season, so with the botanist profession, they'll all be iridium quality. On day 63, I made some iridium sprinklers to take to Ginger Island. 
It took me till the afternoon to actually get to the island because I had to take several trips back to the farm to collect forgotten tools. We made it eventually though and thus began the race to get as many golden walnuts as possible. I also collected all the fibre here and got a nice early mummified frog. I gave my first walnut to the parrot, getting squawked at from a child in response. Then I ran around the island for the day picking up all of the easy ones. It wasn't long before I could unlock the west side of the island and grab the warm memento whilst I was there, even though we can't do this till Kent arrives year two. By the evening, I gathered enough walnuts to gain access to the farmhouse, and before getting some sleep I managed to set up my first island crops using the secret wood seeds and mix seeds. I headed back to town early on day 64 because it was blackberry season and I wanted as many other things as possible. As I passed the town board I accepted Robin's resource rush because we were always in need of wood and getting paid for this is a win-win. It was a good thing I came back early today because I could set off some melon wine and the first cranberries were ready to harvest. It was Claire's birthday so I surprised her at work with her favourite flower then got to see her enjoying some reading on her break. On my blackberry travels, the wizard asked me to help retrieve his magic ink, then all that foraging reminded me I should probably return Linus's berry basket to him. My first day of berry picking ended with 48 blackberries, which isn't great. Let's hope we do better in the next few days. But on the bright side, we hit level 10 farming, which means we could pick the artisan profession. We got a decent amount of gold too. On day 65, I had two Joja Colas for breakfast, thanks to my vending machine. I decided to hit two birds with one stone today, chopping wood in Cinderset Forest for Robin's resource rush and collecting any berries I passed. It took me a good portion of the day to finish that quest, then whilst I was down here I popped into the sewers to gain access to the mutant bug lair, buy the star drop from Krobus and collect the dark talisman. On day 66 Robin sent me the recipe for the stone chest which I'll forget about immediately. This was another day of berry picking. I was determined to have a good stock, but I did also hand out coffees to everyone I passed. Claire seemed to be interested in the weekly aerobics class. Hopefully we can give her some encouragement. And hey, it seems to have worked. Before getting any animals, I wanted to have a silo to store hay, which is the perfect time to admire our beautiful coop. Another focused evening of berry picking and we now had almost 200, feeling a bit more successful now. My skull cabin's yams came to fruition on day 67, and I opted to replace these with full forage this time. It was also a fibre day too. Sam asked me what kind of music their band should make, and this time I chose the high energy dance music. He was also about to feed me a raw egg, but thankfully he dropped it on the floor. I took the blame as well because friendship points. My silo was about to be done, so I bought my first two chickens, one named Rocky and the other named Ginger. Speaking of Ginger, it was raining on Ginger Island today, so I took the boat to try and do that gem puzzle, but forgot to bring a ruby, so we weren't successful today, though it also didn't help that I'd lose track and try the same combination more than once. I decided I was done with hunting blackberries, so I spent the rest of this day exploring the volcano, mainly looking for golden walnuts. Having started this quite late in the day, I didn't quite make it to the top, passing out on floor 7. Waking up on the island farm the next day reminded me I should probably be clearing up this land, I managed to do that singing stone puzzle on my second attempt which is a huge improvement from last time, meaning I could fix the bridge to the dig site and free Professor Snail for the chance at getting even more walnuts. I collected all the ones out in the open here, then donated the fossils I had and reported a total of 22 purple flowers on the island for a few more walnuts. I was back in town with enough time to check the travelling merchant and I'm glad I did because I couldn't pass up the adorable wallflower pal. I think it goes perfectly in this Joja themed house. Day 69 was another cranberry harvest. I visited the coop to pet the chicks and admire the interior, which reminded me I really needed to fill up that silo. I made sure to withdraw the hay when it was full so I could carry on collecting too. Abigail was hanging out at the bus stop for her birthday, with an easy reach to gift her an amethyst. I got a cutscene with Elliot when I stopped by the saloon. I didn't appreciate that he assumed I like wine, it's definitely not my thing. But even so, I proposed a toast to our friendship. You see that glow? A glow of disgust. I was feeling kind of nauseous, but that didn't stop me from learning all the recipes here, nor did it stop me picking up more free mix seeds. Even though it was gloomy on day 70, I couldn't contain my excitement at the spectacular sight of all those pumpkins. I sold all the quality ones and kept the rest for pickles. Since it was a Sunday, Ham drove me to the desert to trade jades for staircases, and whilst I was there I left no forage behind. By the afternoon, I was ready for my next purchase of pumpkin seeds and after requesting a coop upgrade, I toddled off home to replant. 
I did have to make a second trip to buy more though because I miscalculated how many I'd need. Jody was at my door on day 71, asking me to bring a largemouth bass for dinner with them. We'll take care of that, but probably not today. Since I had enough money to buy more crops, I set up a new area with some scarecrows and iridium sprinklers. The clearance bin had a pomegranate sapling for sale. Then I spoke to Claire to buy more pumpkin seeds for the new field, which took until the night time to finish planting and watering, though I did save enough time to fill my inventory with items for the fair tomorrow. On day 72, I made more tappers whilst waiting for the fair to start, before proudly displaying a variety of goods, which were enough to destroy the entire town. Everyone swears by this stupid wheel, so I bet some of my tokens on green, only to lose as usual. I spent an absurd amount of time on the fishing game till I got almost all the tokens I needed, then made one last 100 token bet, and I actually won this time. At the festival shop, I picked up the star drop and the rare crow. A very successful first fair, I think. Day 73 and my coop was upgraded, so I got started with hatching that dino egg. I also harvested my first chicken eggs, so it was time to make a couple of mayo machines. This was the day I decided to tackle the magic ink, so I approached the witch's hut with a chest and my fishing rod. As long as the henchmen are still guarding, you can catch void mayo from the water here, as many as you want, as long as you don't keep them in your inventory. So I put the first one in a chest to be able to catch a second, one for the henchmen and one to ship. That got our green fella out of the way, so I grabbed that ink and walked to the wizards. Now we have access to build more fun stuff and move buildings too. I stepped out into the woods where I sensed a new path had opened up. This was Sprite Spring, where I met Klaus and Angelica. They were forest spirits who, thankfully, didn't hold a grudge with us for choosing the Joja route. I took a quick dip in the water to duck into the secret cave and grab all the valuables there, and there are some goodies on the other side too. I also checked out Aurora Vineyard to find literally nothing of interest, then accepted a new favour from the wizard to pick up some prismatic jelly. I was excited to see this request quite early because we needed Monster Must to help us get the burglar ring. For my final win of the day, the clearance bin was selling fibre seeds again, as well as a cheaper peach sapling. On day 74 I had a lovely varied harvest, and any empty spots were filled with forage seeds. I caught Marnie on her way out with a birthday diamond, then wasted no time in heading to the mines to find that prismatic slime. I was there all day, resetting through the floors till finally, at 1.40am. Oh thank god. <laughs> that was one heck of a stroke of luck. I celebrated the next morning with a breakfast of Joja Cola, then on my way to the wizard bright and early I picked up the winter rare crow from the travelling merchant. I had the wizard a gift, then left, completely forgetting what I came in for. It wasn't long before I realised though, obviously getting shooed away once you got what you needed. I wanted to give Caroline the pumpkin she asked for, but before I could, Abigail asked me to join her for some gaming. I still find Journey of the Prairie King ridiculously hard, but for the first time ever, I got through this level. Abigail thought it was fun. I thought it was so stressful. I handed Caroline the pumpkin and went on my way. That afternoon, I decided to head to Ginger Island. I'd be carrying around a wheat seed for days and it was time I finally got it planted in prep for the cave rock. I had loads of mixed seeds and taro, so it was a good time to plant those too. On day 76, I had a bunch of ancient fibre to harvest and out popped some golden walnuts. It was a good luck day today and I was ready to tackle this volcano once and for all. I blew up this great cluster of cinder shards and got a couple of walnuts along the way. Then thankfully, around 6pm, I made it to the top. And here, we got to meet Lance. He gave us a little bit of info on the forge, then slowly just kinda disappeared. Anyway, I grabbed that free prismatic shard along with two easy golden walnuts and headed out for the day to donate fossil to Professor Snail. I also completed the last question of his survey for even more walnuts. This gave me just enough to be able to restore the beach resort and therefore gaining access to a new part of the beach, along with the Pirate's Cove. I won all three rounds of darts, so that's three more walnuts there. Then as I got back to the farm, I realised the melons were ready, so I came to show the frog, who made me a little uncomfortable. On day 77, I replaced some of the mixed seed crops with pineapple seeds. When I got back home, Morris was there to greet me and let me know about Joja Day, which will be every 22nd of the month. This gives us 20% off seeds till 8pm. Given that he now sells all the seeds all year round, this was a huge deal. One I'll immediately forget about. I refilled my kegs with a new batch of wine before coming up to the mountain to give Robin a sunflower for her birthday. I trekked all the way back down again to check the travelling merchant, who was as useless as ever. But it wasn't a completely fruitless trip because we did manage to stop in at the wizards to give him a purple mushroom. Lance was waiting on my doorstep the morning of day 78. He was here to give me his schedule, which will help in trying to befriend him. 
I wasn't joking when I said I immediately forgot about the Joja sale. Nope. Instead, I spent the entire day farming dust sprites, for coal and for the burglar ring. Of course, with a healthy dose of Monster Musk. I passed out for the day annoyingly close to my goal. I was literally less than 10 away. On day 79, I gathered some kind of damp cranberries. Why does all the rain have to come after I have sprinklers? The only other thing I actually did this day was chop wood on my farm. On day 80, I bought a duck who I named Daisy. Demetrius was hogging the entire special orders board, so I went with biome balance because it seems like the easier option of the two. Then I felt it was about time I got my pickaxe upgraded to gold. When I went to give George a birthday gift, I walked into a little doctor's visit. He seemed pretty irritated, but I told him it would be a good idea to listen to Harvey. He begrudgingly agreed. Harvey is just trying to help after all. That's okay though, because I cheered him up with a leak. I successfully helped Murray with her math problems with some educated guesses. Then asked Robin to upgrade my coop a final time so we can get lots of rabbits. We need them feet. Now I was up by the lake, I could begin the biome balance quest, catching half the fish tonight and saving the rest to do the next day. But first, we got our final forage harvest to deal with. I was so relieved to have the fish quest done by lunchtime. We all know how I feel about fishing. I checked the monster slayer board to see I only needed two more dust rows. Told you I was close. I dropped everything to smack down a final pair and collect that burglar ring, a true loot goblin essential. I then returned to the mines because I didn't have enough solar essence to make an iridium band to replace the magnet ring and the glow ring I was wearing. As soon as I got my 50 of solar essence, I crafted that ring so I could enjoy the new loadout. This all made me very hungry, so I decided to take Jody up on her offer of dinner if I bring a largemouth bass. Of course, the first thing I did was dump it on the floor. I do hope these floors are clean, although they definitely aren't now. That delicious meal took a total of zero minutes, so I made use of the rest of the time with farm clearance. On day 82, I waited outside Clint's till he opened because I was excited to pick up my new gold pickaxe. After picking up the beach freebies, I hopped on the boat to Ginger Island because it was raining again. First, I checked on the farm which had a bunch of crops ready to go, including the wheat, so I showed the creepy frog who wanted to tickle me. Thanks for the walnuts, but I'll be on my way. Lance got a gift of some green tea. Then, since I forgot to bring one, I hunted down a ruby in the volcano. I confused myself again with the gem puzzle, so I decided to leave it for now till I could get another clue, since I already forgot the first one. The morning of day 83, I hurried back to the farm because the next batch of pumpkins were ready. One more lot tomorrow and we'll be done with fall. Given the day, I didn't replant anything. Instead, going for the maze in the secret woods to get the star drop from Old Master Cannoli. Not sure why I hadn't done it yet, since I've had the sweet gem berries since day 62. I took some monster musk to the mines to gather more coal, then it was time for my second maze of the day. This one did take me a while, but I did eventually manage to grab that golden pumpkin, then left with the rare crow since we'll need it for perfection. On day 84, I replaced the wine with pumpkin juice since I ran out of melons and I don't have enough ancient fruit yet. I dealt with my last harvest of the season and did my routine check of the travelling merchant. This time, she had some chocolate cake, which was useful since this will be a love gift for Susan's birthday. I stopped in at Robin's who gave me the recipe for the flute block and the drum blocks. We'll be needing this for more golden walnuts. I opened some coconuts and some geodes at Clint's, some for loot and some for museum donations. Don't worry Gunther, you'll be out of there soon. I got several rewards today, including a free flute block, so we have one less to craft now. I tracked down Susan to give her her cake and stopped in to Joja Mart with gifts too. Back on the farm, I found the beautiful sight of ancient fruit in my greenhouse, so the evening went on turning them into seeds to expand my crop. Day 85 and I was relieved to see Gunther at my door. He'd escaped that museum desk and now will also roam the town. He came to let me know that I'd be receiving a portion of the museum's funding for all my contributions. I went to check on the animals and completely forgot about that dino egg, so now we had a new lizard to name. This one will be called Kermit. Coming in here also reminded me that I can't buy a radiator, so we'll only be getting small chicken eggs for a while. Krobus was out in the open, so I chased them to the playground and they gave me the magnifying glass so I can now find secret notes. A new week means new special orders, and obviously we went for community cleanup to get those fibre seeds. I felt kinda bad for scaring Krobus on the birthday, but I think I made it up to them with the gift of wild horseradish. I've noticed something I tend to do is hand out gifts to everyone on someone's birthday. It's like a reminder to work on those friendships. Then, the rest of the day was spent fishing for trash, but annoyingly, I kept catching fish. I even tried the desert and the farm. 
The next morning, I got a mail from Gunther containing 40,000 gold. That must have been some donation the museum received. I also received some gifts and recipes and a challenge from Willy to catch a squid. It was another rainy day on Ginger Island and I was armed with my flute blocks to complete that mermaid puzzle. Thank you for the walnuts. Thanks to those walnuts, I could now unlock the desert trader. I also managed to guess my way through the gem puzzle. Funnily enough, I never even needed the ruby. The rest of this night was spent fishing for trash, but I did get a good few walnuts. Whilst I was asleep that night, the witch came by and left me a gift. That will have to wait though, because I was still on the island with only seven walnuts left to open Key's secret room. I spent some time at the dig site today, fishing for trash and walnuts, and waiting for panning spots. No lucky ring today though. I came back to town to open more coconuts, getting a lovely new hat, and the fossilized skull I needed. I put the new hat on right away, then went on a bit of a gifting spree, including Linus whose birthday it was, and he became our very first best friend. Back on the farm, I picked up the void egg and incubated it for an unlimited supply. Then after a few days of trying, I'd gathered enough trash to complete the community cleanup at 1.40 in the morning. On day 88, Linus mailed me the fish taco recipe, as well as one for fibre seeds and a gift of fried calamari. I was excited to end my perpetual fibre shortage, crafting over 200 fibre seeds which I hastened to plant, doing them by the sprinklers so I'd have the option to hold the spots till spring if I wanted to. On day 89, I bought some more cheese from the travelling merchant to keep hold of for cooking. Linus was taking a dip in the freezing cold. I could never, that's what the bathhouse is for. I asked Robin to build me a barn, but sadly I couldn't find a mod with a Jojo exterior, so if you know one, please do let me know in the comments. The same goes for the silo too. As I came out of Robin's, she offered Linus some food, but he was already satisfied from a good day of foraging. Here, I had the option to ask him to move on to the farm, but of course I just said that I'm pleased that he's doing well. Much to his relief, this is the way of life he's happy with. Even though it wasn't a good luck day and it was already the afternoon, I opted to spend the rest of this one in Skull Caverns as I was getting withdrawals. I passed out on floor 41, which wasn't bad for half an unplanned day, waking up the next morning with an amount of loot that I can't be mad about. I got quite a few secret notes on that trip, but the most exciting one was the Joja truck guy. I can finally get that special charm for a permanent luck boost. Later that day, I ran into Morris overseeing a shipment of materials to the warehouse. Sounds like Morris had some big plans for Stardew Valley, and I was excited to see them unfold. It seems that through our friendship, he was beginning to understand the importance of this community, and now it was his time to help and redeem himself. He really does seem like a completely new person now. Clint asked me to give the amethyst to Emily. I'd usually feel strange taking the credit, but let's be honest, this is actually from me. Clint didn't provide this gift, I did. I got a very cheesy joke from Sophia, pun completely intended. Then I foraged the day away in West Indesat for my first Saturday sesh of the season, giving me enough stuff for my first set of winter seeds. When I got in that night, I drank a bedtime Joja Cola. I have been doing this daily, but I thought it would be repetitive now to keep mentioning. I walked out on day 91 to find Pierre at my door. Ew. He said if I keep buying seeds from him, I'll be twice as productive next year. Is he seeing things? I haven't bought a single seed from him. Morris appeared here right after with his own exciting news. The warehouse was available for an entertainment opportunity, but needed investment, so I should go speak to him if I was interested. I left this for now because I knew it would cost half a million gold, which I didn't have nor did I want to spend. What I did want to spend my gold on was the Iridium pickaxe upgrade to make Skull Caverns easier. I took the free mixed seeds from the clearance bin, then saw Claire seemingly enjoying herself at the exercise class. It's good to see her integrating with everyone. I was sure she worked up an appetite, so I asked if she wanted to grab food at the saloon. We'll make an exception for the friendship. The whole menu looked great, but I opted for the zucchini fritters. I could go for some of those right now. Full from lunch, I went to Pierre's bearing gifts, most importantly for Caroline as it was her birthday. On day 92, I got some wool in the mail, which was perfect to cover for shipping. I made another 21 kegs, which filled out this area perfectly. Then I set off the next batch of pumpkin juice. With that area full, I began filling out the caves. These are fun free spaces for processing machines. Winter is for decorating. So I put down some paths, but decided I didn't like this mismatch, so I kind of make it like a decked area. I also added paths through the kegs because if you didn't already know, we walk a tiny bit faster on them. Peak efficiency. The evening was spent on what felt like the endless task of chopping down farm trees. Day 93 was a good luck day, so I geared up for Skull Caverns. I couldn't go early though because I needed to pick up my pickaxe. And on my way to Clint's, I checked the special orders board and decided to go with the tropical fish one because I didn't feel like digging up 100 ginger. 
I collected my shiny new pickaxe and walked straight to the desert. I wanted to get as much loot and iridium as possible, even finding my first auto grabber, which is a win because I can't just go and buy one from Marnie. I passed out on floor 76 that day, but other than the auto grabber, everything else I got was just okay. The void chick hatched this day, but I seem to have forgotten this was a chicken and not a lizard, so I named it Pascal. Oopsie. I planted my free pomegranate sapling in the greenhouse before getting that silly tomato cutscene. I know tomatoes are technically a fruit, but I'd be upset too if I asked for fruit and got tomatoes. I don't even like tomatoes, unless it's in sauce form. I don't really know why that is, they just taste so different. Anyway, I also got a cutscene with Sebastian who was understandably frustrated that nobody took his job seriously. Then it was over to Willy's to upgrade my rod to Iridium, which would make the tropical fish quest significantly easier. I remembered to bring the skull to the island, thus completing another fossil. Gimme them walnuts. I needed the dopamine boost from those rewards to carry me through all the fishing I was about to have to do. On day 95, I took a brief break from fishing to access Mr. Key's walnut room for the first time. For my first key quest, I picked Skull Cavern Invasion because I can't stand that key's crop quest. Although both options were kind of difficult for our first ones. Then it was back to fishing. I caught all the discus and limefish I needed, so that was enough fishing for one day. I left the stingrays alone for now, but as I pulled into Willy's shop, I was surprised to find him dealing with a crab problem. Gus came to his aid though and took them off his hands for crab cakes. I know he said not to tell Willy, but what does he think Gus will do with them? He literally sells food after all. I stopped by the Adventurers Guild to say hello to Marlon, where I got introduced to Alicia. This was important because it was the last event I needed to get access to the Enchanted Grove, which if you don't know what that is, you'll be seeing very soon. In fact, the wizard was at my door first thing on day 96 to talk to me about it. All I had to do was head to his tower, but first, a new batch of juice. With that now dealt with, I was off to see the wizard, who made me drink something weird again. A little dodgy, but then I felt something change within myself. I then also unlocked the Shrine of Illusions, and I don't know if it's just me, but I think the wizard looks great in pink. I actually kind of prefer it. I handed him a Void Essence for a request, then went on my way. I cleared out Sprite Spring which had loads of goodies to collect, then went home to gather at least some of the fibre that was ready. It's so satisfying, this will never get old. Towards the end of the day, I was hyped to find more free strawberry seeds in the sale bin, then it was time to meet the wizard, do a little bit of magic, and unlock our nexus. The Enchanted Grove is so pretty, I love it here. Of course, the first warp point we get is to the wizards, and we'll be getting more locations as we progress through the game. The other amazing thing about this is we can now get dewdrop berries here, an amazing all day buff food including plus 2 luck and plus 2 speed. Great for skull caverns amongst other things. Day 97 started with some free hay from Marnie. I chopped trees outside Robin's till she opened so I could ask her for a barn upgrade. I dropped Linus the iron bar he asked for, then as I was now low on wood I chopped more trees by the train station. I realised I was coming up to that tropical fish deadline so I crafted a couple of cork bobbers. Stingrays are such a pain, it took me till nightfall to successfully catch all five that I needed. Then I gratefully received my reward, relieved to be done with fishing for now. Goodbye bubble spot, I will not be needing you. With exactly 20 walnuts, I could build the farm obelisk, which I made use of right away so I could store all my fish. Then rounded off the day by making a warp from my farm to the nexus. I woke up on day 98 with the achievement of having made 1 million gold, another major goal completed. I'd now unlocked the option to build a tractor garage from Robin, but I won't be getting one just yet because we need the gold for other things. Willy had somehow crammed an entire deluxe fish tank into my mailbox. Maybe Rasmodius isn't the only wizard in town. It was the last day we could do the Skull Caverns invasion, which was also a very good luck day. Harvey's birthday will have to wait. Being a Sunday, I could also trade more staircases. Then between the bombs, shafts and stairs, I successfully reached floor 100 in one piece that evening. Also get in the cutscene for the nasty snake milk. Two birds, one stone. Super gross, but our health is permanently increased by 25. I carried on through the night to see how far I could get, and to gather as much radioactive ore as possible, eventually passing out on floor 117. As per tradition, here is my morning after haul, including two prizzies, loads of iridium ore, and a decent amount of the radioactive stuff, which I began smelting right away so I could have some on hand. I crafted some more iridium sprinklers to add to my crop fields and my greenhouse. Then relaxed for the daylight hours with a bit of minor farm decorating. On my way to the night market, I picked up Pierre's prime produce before buying the painting from the sketchy art guy. He doesn't count, okay? I also shopped with the travelling merchant and spent this night deep sea fishing. 
being lucky enough to fish up a pearl. Day 100 began with refilling my jars and kegs. To set myself up for the next 100 days, I spent the majority of this day chopping wood. I did make a stop off at Sprite Springs to set up a warp, then I remembered about Pierre's prime produce. I bought a load of pumpkin seeds, then promptly realised these would take a little bit too long. At least I could save these for next year. Instead, I opted for a load of bok choy seeds since they have a short growing time, just in case I don't get the 25 gold ones from the first harvest. With that now dealt with, there was still enough time to hit up the night market to buy the next painting. If you thought I'd spent my last night fishing, you got another thing coming. Nope. I went home to place two auto petters i just bought from Jojo Mart, then headed to bed at a somewhat decent time, making 76,000 gold. Farm tour time! First, let's admire this Jojo themed house one more time. Isn't it a beauty? Then, up to the right we have our keg operations, which I'm super happy about our progress with. Below the keg area, we have our animals home. We've got our fully upgraded coop, which houses a few little animal friends. And then right next door is our completely empty barn, which I need to at least repaint the exterior of. Carrying on south, we've got our well-sized crop areas and our oak risen farm, which leads to our nice big greenhouse. One day, this will hopefully all be filled with ancient fruit. Looping back up the path, we have the storage area as well as the rest of the processing machines. There's a lot more of the farm I haven't made use of yet. This map is enormous, and we still have plenty of time to add to it. The only goal that we didn't meet in this 100 days was 10 hearts with Morris, so we'll just have to pick this up in the next 100 days. I played 200 days of Stardew Valley Expanded, Jojo Edition. I never thought I would enjoy a Jojo run quite this much, and to be honest it's mostly thanks to the Expanded mod, but I'm excited for us to get stuck back in. I've got some lofty plans for these 100 days, and this is what I hope to achieve. Actually get 10 hearts with Morris since we failed last time. Find all the golden walnuts. Complete the museum and get that star drop. Get married. You'll find out to who later. Get level 10 fishing. This skill always lags behind. I want to build the movie theatre. And finally, I want to fill up my nexus. We'll still be under the same rules as the last time, but before we begin, it would make me so happy if you can like and subscribe. Join us. Thrive. And with that out the way, let's do this. My first day back was the wizard's birthday, so I jogged over with an iridium purple mushroom, almost accidentally eating it as usual, but it did complete his friendship, so we're off to a strong start. I placed the chicken statue proudly in my house before picking up and chugging my first Jojo Cola of the video. My greenhouse got its final two sprinklers, then it was off to the night market to do the mermaid show since I forgot to get that pearl last time. I bought the last painting of the year, then headed home as I didn't quite feel like being humiliated by the blobfish this year, especially on my first day back. Day 102 was a really good luck day, so I geared up for Skull Caverns, but before taking off, I found out my secret friend would be Penny this year. This was a win, she's a pretty easy one. This Skull Caverns run was slightly painful because I was low on supplies and I can't just buy bombs from the dwarf, but I did get very lucky with an early prismatic shard. My first treasure floor of this 100 days contained 5 minus treats, which, let's be honest, I'll probably never use, and it was kind of funny getting the mermaid show secret note the day after I already did it. My floor 100 treasure was some quality sprinklers. Yay! I passed out on floor 107, so I woke up the next morning with this lot of loot. I got a decent amount of iridium ore and three prizzies, but other than that, meh. Pam sent me a beer in the mail, but I had to dump it on the floor for now whilst I cleared up my full backpack. With all that taken care of, I refilled the jam jars and picked up my gold axe from Clint, which I used to clear up some more farm trees. This wood went towards a barn upgrade. When I went to give Marlon a birthday gift, I got a cutscene where he helped me make a warp for my nexus. Marlon gratefully received a life elixir, then I spent the evening fishing at the lake to chip away at the XP, getting help from this bubble spot to reach level 8 that night. Day 104 started with a new batch of pumpkin juice and planted another 92 fibre seeds. Evelyn got a fairy rose for her birthday, earning me the popular achievement, and the rest of the day was spent on farm clearance. That night, we made 60,000 gold, and the next morning, someone was at my door. Camilla was here to whisk me away and tell me my nexus was beautiful. Apparently, we had some important business to attend to, showing me a location in the continent of Galdora. This was the Crimson Badlands, a dangerous place with some very tough monsters, and Camilla brought me here because she had a test for me. She helped me make a warp so I could come back at any time. I grabbed myself a Jojo Cola to process that experience, then requested my first ever mill from Robin since I'd never actually built one before. Whilst I was up there, I could give Robin the hardwood for a project, and picked up all the crafting recipes she had to offer today. Morris got some cloth as a gift, then whilst expanding the ancient fruit crop, I harvested the bok choy for Pierre's prime produce. I didn't get 25 gold ones yet, but I did have plenty more seeds to plant. 
That night, I fished for the squid at a beach bubble spot in response to an old letter from Willy. Glad to have that now sorted. On day 106, I finished replacing the basic sprinklers with iridium ones and prep for spring. Andy sent me 50 Joja Colas in the mail. <laughs> oh no. Time to chug every last one. <laughs> I dread to think about the bloat this would cause, but I walked it off by placing more paths around the farm. Things are slowly becoming a bit tidier each day. Day 107 was Leah's birthday, but for some reason her cabin was locked even though I had more than two hearts with her and there wasn't a festival today. It was a max luck day though, so I wasn't waiting around. I returned her gift to a chest then walked over to the desert for another attempt at Skull Caverns. The treasure floor had a lovely prismatic shard, then where I'd usually skip these I actually bothered to take on the prehistoric floors because seeking out the pepperexes for the monster slayer girl when you need them does become a pain. Besides a free crystallarium, the rest of this day was uneventful. I literally only made it to floor 60. On day 108, I was pretty much out of pumpkins, so I had to swap out for cranberry wine, which would have been better than nothing. That reminded me to add to my ancient fruit in the greenhouse. I was determined to have this filled ASAP. I woke Shane up from a drunken floor nap, wanting to buy some animals whilst there, but Marnie was now on her way out. To make productive use of the evening, I accepted the juicy bugs quest and started grinding for that in the mines, getting about halfway through that night. Day 109 was our first feast of the winter star. I was surprised to see Morris here and of course we had to stop to say hi. I brought with me an emerald to give to Penny and my gift giver this year was Leah who got me… an emerald? <laughs> we did more gifting on day 110 because this was Clint's birthday. From there I took my first trip to Ginger Island of the video to clear out the dig site and check on the farm which had some crops to harvest. I returned home to grab that greenhouse bok choy but as you can see I didn't quite get the 25 gold ones here. Thankfully though, that was made up by some tarot I harvested earlier. The air's being closed for now, I headed back up to the mines to continue farming bug meat. On day 111, I went out for a morning walk and stopped in at Andy's who had cleaned up his place very nicely. He offered me a farmer's lunch, although I suppose at this hour it would be a farmer's brunch, but it was delicious nonetheless. I waddled on over to Sophia's with an Iridium Fairy Rose for her birthday. Another friendship completed. Then on to Pierre's to buy the grass starter recipe and drop off the prime produce for 2,500 gold. Having dropped off the bug meat on a previous day, all I had to do now was slay the bugs, which didn't take long at all, leaving the rest of the day for some general farm chores. On day 112 I bought a pricey garlic from the travelling merchant, though let's be real, garlic is always worth it. I brought some maple syrup to the bear in the secret woods, dumping it on the floor of course, in exchange for a special knowledge. This makes salmon berries and blackberries worth triple the price, not that we'll be selling them. Whilst dealing with the ancient fruit, I turned that garlic into seeds since I won't be buying those from Pierre. Then I was shown this disgusting wriggly mess on my way down to Ginger Island to plant one of those garlic seeds for the frog. I made some good progress with the walnuts today, including finishing the fossils. <gasps> we now only have 22 to go, and whilst I was in the walnut room, I purchased the key to the town. On day 113, I woke up on Ginger Island completely forgetting about the brand new year. What the? I rushed off home to be greeted by Kent, who was here to introduce himself after returning from overseas. I didn't manage to prep all my sprinklers before the end of winter, so this day contains lots of hoeing and watering, though it was satisfying getting to slash through all that fibre. To even things up, I decided this field would be all quality sprinklers, taking time to make the necessary adjustments. Lewis asked me if I was interested in using this extra abandoned garden space, so of course we accepted. We can always use more land for more gold. Seeds this year, I bought about a sprinkler's worth for each crop, for cooking and for crafting, with the rest of the spots to be taken by cauliflower for profit. I messed up with the planting though, so now things won't look satisfying, but oh well. My lack of preparation meant there was no way I was going to get through the planting of the cauliflower all today, so that continued into day 114, with a quick break to visit Morris for his birthday, finally reaching 10 hearts with him. I was also there to pick up more cauliflower seeds since I didn't have quite enough and after an entire day of watering, I passed out by the kegs. Another rainy spring the third for my final round of planting. It was then over to Ginger Island to hunt for, well, ginger. I'd stupidly accepted this version of the island ingredients quest, so I'll need 100 of the stuff. I also picked up Skull Cavern Invasion in case I wanted to do it. Day 100. <laughs> <laughs> Day 116 started with making more ancient scenes for the greenhouse before looking everywhere for Kent for his birthday. I even looked up his schedule to find out where he should be, but for now he seems to have vanished, so over to the island instead to find more ginger. 
Since I can't buy coffee from Gus, I planted a sprinkler worth on the island for an unlimited supply as long as I remember to harvest it. Our garlic was also ready to show the frog, glad to be finally done with his quests and never talk to him again. On day 117, I started filling up the mushroom cave with kegs, leaving them empty till the next wine batch is done. I traded for some artifact troves at the desert which I took straight to Clint's along with all my geodes for a mass opening, getting a fair amount of new stuff to donate. I passed by Rasmodius protecting his crops from his ex, then bumped into Willy who wanted to show me the king salmon he just caught. I don't think I'll be getting that one anytime soon. On day 118 I started planting ancient fruit on the island. After the next round of the ginger grind, I ventured into the volcano for dragon's teeth and walnuts. But the most fun loot of the day was this dwarf hammer I got from this chest, though to be honest I'm mainly a sword person. Day 119 in what seems to be tradition now, I wanted to take on the Skull Cavern Key quest on the last possible day. Lewis won't be getting a birthday gift this year. It was all going so well until I got absolutely swarmed by bats. Thankfully, aside from the hospital bill, I didn't lose anything. I headed home with my tail between my legs to plant the treasure sapling, drown my sorrows in Joja Cola and went to bed. On day 120, I could finally give Kent a welcome gift which I definitely didn't just get from the mail. For this week's special request, I decided to help Andy with a cellar, and out of all the materials, all I was missing was the iron. I was excited to find some starfruit seeds at the clearest bin today, that's going straight in my backpack. Then, armed with more sprinklers and ancient seeds, it was off to Ginger Island again to expand that crop. I was also here for Ginger, but I kept getting my tools mixed up and ended up destroying some. For Lance's birthday, he got one of my few golden pumpkins. Then the evening was spent swapping out my ingredient crops for more cauliflower and grinding for iron in the mines. Marlon was waiting on the doorstep on day 121, asking me to drop by the guild when I have a moment. I dealt with my strawberry harvest, then dropped off those materials to Andy less than 24 hours after the request. Now that's service. On my way out, he wanted to talk to me about some stuff. Seems like he might have been jealous of me at first, but actually, I brought more commerce to the valley and for that, he was thankful. I wanted to pop in and say hi to Sophia whilst I was down there, but I found her crying in her parents' old room. She was having kind of a rough time at the moment, so I stayed to watch anime with her to help her feel better. I caught Pierre trying to make up for his lack of seed profit by ripping off the local bartender who wasn't best please. You won't catch Joja doing that. What I was here for was for a bouquet, which even though I think you can get it from the travelling merchant, I didn't want to have to chance waiting several years for it. So I count this as required for perfection. And of course, we asked out Claire. Time to go home and make a celebratory batch of wine. For my last stop of the day, I went to see Marlon who told me his boat can take us to Lance's outpost in the Highlands, but only if I do him a favour first. To get this access, I'll have to give him loads of monster parts, which shouldn't be too difficult at this point. On day 122, Gus stirred his sauce on my porch which was weird. Then somehow he almost set us on fire. That wasn't all he was here for though, he wanted to give me a mini jukebox and the recipe to craft it, which I'll forget about as soon as he leaves. To make up for yesterday's attempt to scam the locals, Pierre sent me a mini shipping bin which I plonked down next to the greenhouse. I got caught by Jazz whilst checking the trash, mind your own business kid, then surprised Claire at work with a daffodil. After giving Vincent some birthday grapes, it was another round of ginger hunting on the island. Progress was slow, but it was progress, and whilst I was out this way, I thought I should go dungeon crawling on the volcanoes because the monsters here can also drop ginger and this counts towards the island ingredients quest. On day 123, I fished for a while at Shearwater Bridge, realising it had been a while since we worked on that fishing level. I was also sure to pan any spots that came up when suddenly... <gasps> what? The lucky ring! <laughs> this is why I now try to bring my pan everywhere. To help with the fishing, I enchanted the fishing rod, taking a couple of goes to get the master enchantment, which adds a fishing level making the bar a little bit bigger. And this was the perfect chance to now combine the lucky ring with the burglar ring to boost our loot. My remaining Prizzy and Cinder Shards went on enchanting my pickaxe with the powerful upgrade, meaning most rocks will only take one swing to break. Day 124 started with some ginger digging. I jumped right on this bubble spot to help me with the fishing level on my way to check out the travelling merchant's inventory of nothing particularly useful. Andy showed us his brand new cellar and entrusted me with his jam recipe, making strawberries worth 25% more. The greenhouse now contained the wonderful sight of a decent harvest of ancient fruit. These will all be turned into seeds for the island farm. This year's first batch of cauliflower came to fruition on day 125, so I got to work replanting more, praying that I had enough seeds because this is a festival day and all the stores are closed. I did run out on this second field though, so those will have to wait for tomorrow. I felt unprepared for this year's egg hunt, also noting that in the expander mod, the eggs change location each year, and even though I did try my best, I decided to let Abigail take the crown this year. 
The previous day's humiliation was made better by the sight of my first giant cauliflower on day 126. With the harvest now dealt with, I bought more animals from Marnie since she'll be closed for the next couple days, starting with five new bunnies. Hopefully you might recognise their names. Then, for the barn animals, I decided to go with a pasta theme. I guess I was hungry, but when am I not? I brought a beautiful flower to the beautiful lady before being overjoyed to find rhubarb in the sale bin since we can't just get this from Sandy. 600 more cauliflower seeds later, I took a detour on my way home to stop in at Robin's to get the barn repainted to be more, you know, on brand. And whilst I was there, I commissioned the tractor garage to be finally built. I fished up the lost necklace from the bathhouse and went foraging at the summit, climbing back down the mountain again to get all those seeds planted. On day 127, I checked out the old shed, but it seemed completely wrecked, so I ignored that for now to clear more of the farm. Marlon had an intriguing quest for us, but we'll handle that later because I had plans to visit Olivia for her birthday, and bring Claire another gift, getting us to 10 hearts. As I passed by Leah, she asked me why I became a farmer. I told her I wanted to escape my old life, which was true when I made the decision, but we all know that story. I wandered around Cindersat Forest making use of salmonberry season, stopping by the bear cave to pick up any cooking recipes, but even though I foraged the entire evening, I only got a few berries. On day 128, I got round to adding a border to this one field, which was really just procrastination for refilling my processing machines. I looted the mineral cave, and it was finally time to take my tractor for a test drive. Oops, I didn't mean to till all those spots. This tractor makes quick work of all the farm trees, I don't think I'll be facing a wood shortage again anytime soon. I set the settings to add a bit of speed and radius, but not too much because I still want things to take some time, but this really does show why I don't tend to jump on adding this mod to all my playthroughs. I don't want to become reliant on this thing, but I think for a farm of this size, it works well. I was very pleased to return with almost three stacks of wood. I also got to test it out on replanting this batch of cauliflower too, it's so satisfying. That evening, I wanted to handle Marlon's quests. I dropped off the bombs in a chest, then hand delivered all of the monster parts he asked for. On my way home, I ran into Claire who was just leaving work. She asked me why I was up so late, I told her I was still working. Then she invited me to her place for dinner tomorrow. It's a date. I made a last minute decision to visit Krobus that night, buying all of his recipes, but I paid for that decision by passing out in the forest. The next morning, Marlon was pleased with my efforts and asked me to meet him at the dock, but first we had some strawberries to harvest. I hadn't seen any rain for several days, so I used the rain totem to call for some, then I raced straight over to the Adventurers Guild where I met Jadu? This is the mage who ordered all those bombs. I'm curious as to why they need them though, and maybe one day in a later update we might find out. As a reward, I got access to an order ledger for some extra decoration, which is redundant since I can't spend gold here. With that over with, we took the boat to the highlands where Lance chatted to us about some monster crops, needing my assistance in growing some for his research. These seeds dropped from monsters here, so I wasted no time in collecting them and exploring. I climbed to the top of the big hill to find the dino boss. This thing has a ridiculous amount of health, but eventually it met its demise. Oh, finally. And it dropped a whole bunch of goodies, including a special key, which you'll see what this is for later. I wanted to get the fungus seeds from this mushroom area, but apparently it was my turn to die. I lost a plethora of valuable items, Aww. but it was the salmon berries that upset me the most, so that's what I asked Marlon to retrieve for me. On day 130, I received loads of life elixirs in the mail from Lance. I probably should have waited for these. I got loads of rice shoots from the highlands yesterday, so I planted them all by the mill. I was popping back into the house to pick up my daily Joja Cola when Robin knocked on my door. She was here to inspect the old shed, and let me know she could refurbish it with the right materials. We definitely won in on that, but it was going to be a challenge. I retrieved Haley's bracelet from the beach, but I was here for a more important piece of jewellery, the mermaid pendant. This was the day I asked Claire to marry me. Looks like she'll be planning the wedding from behind the checkouts. It was also raining on Ginger Island, but that didn't put me off planting those monster crops, digging up more ginger, and accepting another round of Skull Cavern Invasion. Day 131 began with the pineapple harvest, then it was time for a new round of geode cracking, scoring just a couple of new things to donate, but I did gain another crystallarium. I made it to Claire's for dinner that evening, a lovely way to celebrate our engagement and see her cute little house for the first and last time. That night, I had a brainwave. I was stressed about trying to happen upon the dairy products at the travelling merchant, completely overlooking the auto grabber in my coop. I just moved it into the barn and problem solved. Day 132 was Shane's birthday. 
He got a basic hot pepper because I couldn't find any quality ones, but that was still enough to complete the friendship. I trekked up to Robbins to ask about the shed materials. Most of them were fine, but it was the 20 battery packs which would cause issues. Heading back into town, I found Shane, Clint and Emily putting together an ad for Joja and I just had to take part. Even if I was just an extra, I'm still in it. I caught exactly one fish before a bubble spot vanished on me, then it was back to the island for the bajillionth time in search of more ginger, not just in the ground but in the volcano too. Day 133 was the big wedding! In a very early start, we were pronounced wife and wife, but when we got back home, Claire was hiding behind a vase. Hopefully she wasn't already regretting things. Having carried it around for a while, I finally returned that necklace to Abigail, then it was yet another day of ginger collecting. Why did I do this to myself? On day 134, I dealt with more ancient fruit before digging for more damn ginger. But we now had enough, so the end is in sight. For this week's key quest, I chose the love gifts one, having never done it before, and needing to work on friendships. On day 135, I received the official completion of the island ingredients quest. Now that I have the recipe, I crafted my first solar panel. I'll need more of these to get batteries for Grandpa's shed. My first love gift for the quest went to Claire. The flower reminded me to grab this season's forage from Sprite Springs, then this entire day was spent in the mines for ores and coal. On day 136, I finished moving my crystallariums into the house so they weren't blocked by the tractor garage. This day was the flower dance, so I did the rounds for the friendship points, and then took my place for a dance with my wife. Looks like I'm not doing squats this time, it's lunges instead. I rolled out of bed on day 137 to give my wife a sunflower. I broke my fast with my daily Joja Cola, then tidied up a very messy coop. I can't wait for another auto grabber. Being over halfway through the week, I needed to make more progress with that key quest, so I rained gifts upon the entire town on my way to buy a buttload of parsnips to sacrifice to hold the sprinkler spots for summer. I got screamed at for helping to clear Penny and Pam's trailer, and Penny tried to make it up to me by almost poisoning me. Let's hope this was an accident. I helped a Joja employee in his time of need, relieved to hear that Shane will be okay. Then followed Andy into the woods where he told me about the history of Aurora Vineyard, which we've yet to find out how to acquire. After a day of major socialising, I returned home to swap the ready cauliflower for the parsnip seeds. On day 138, I made a couple of sashimi. After giving Pierre a birthday gift, he got a plate for his quest, saving the other for Sebastian, since he loves this stuff too. I shared some ring fruit wine with Olivia while she told me about the Gatorio Empire and the travelling merchant. Then, it was back to work handing out love gifts for the day with a little visit to Ginger Island to place those solar panels, but I kinda got distracted by all the crops that were ready so I forgot and left. I helped Shane clear up his litter and watched Leah creating some art suggesting that she have an art show in town. Besides, bringing more tourists will probably mean more profit for Joja. In the evening, I gained access to the dwarf, better late than never. Obviously, I can't really buy much, but we do need the friendship as well as the recipes and the rare crow. Emily also offered me a drink on the house. I had a good gander at the cocktail menu. The rosette nebula looks exactly like my kind of thing. What would you pick? On day 139, I got a decent rebate from all that Joja produce Pierre had been profiting from. Ironic, huh? Claire got the last gift needed to complete the key quest, so I sprinted straight over to Ginger Island to place those solar panels and check the key gem shop too. But when I got there, I couldn't remember what I wanted. What I did remember is that I wanted to be prepared for summer, so I picked up all my seeds in advance. Back at the farm, I harvested the last lot of cauliflowers, including all but one of the giant ones for memories, replacing them with the sacrificed parsnips. Then I suddenly remembered about a monster slayer goal I recently hit, collecting that arcane hat and putting it straight on. It was time for a change, I think. The new hat gave me the confidence to revisit the highlands and use that special key to rescue a trap door from all those scary void spirits. Whilst Pierre was having a beach day on day 140, I left him a load of produce in exchange for his gold. This gold went straight to Morris to get that theatre built. I wanted to commemorate the moment with a photo shoot with Haley, which ended in slight disaster. Thankfully, she wasn't hurt or anything. I was running low on ores, and it was a good luck day, so I posted myself at the mines to hunt for more gold till the clock struck 12 because at this level of funds, I didn't want the medical bill. Day 141, summer was in the air and a battery was in my mail. Thanks Pam! I set off the next batch of pineapple wine and cauliflower juice, including the addition of another 14 kegs. Then, it was time for the big planting. As per last season, this area was for a sprinkler each of ingredient crops. Then I hopped on the tractor to cover the rest of the land in melons. Such a time saver. 
That freed up my evening for a spontaneous trip to Jojomart, getting the amazing news that Morris would be moving to the valley. His house was soon to be built, but due to an iron shortage, he needed my help in collecting those baths, so of course we'll do anything to help Morris. I said hi to my wife on my way out, when she surprised me there with a star drop. She carried this all the way to work? I guess she must have been expecting me. The perfect place for the perfect gift. I dropped everything that night to gather materials for Morris, even passing out by the furnaces smelting the iron for him. On day 142, Claire made me a lovely morning cuppa and suggested we go on a walk together that weekend. I'm looking forward to it. This entire day was spent mining for more iron so that I could deliver the bars first thing on day 143, and to be honest, he paid me really well for them. I pre-dropped off a load of eggs for Gus's giant omelette, so now all I have left to do is to collect them from the coop as they're laid. Walking past the board reminded me to pick up a new special request, going with Gunther's one because this unlocks the bone mill which will be our easiest way to get fertiliser. With my usual method, I delivered the bone fragments I had first, then with a healthy dose of monster musk, I got right to it. It only took me a few hours to clear that quest, my next stop being the adventurer's guild to sell off all the bone swords, and pick up the skeleton masks for all those ones we just slayed. Morris was on my doorstep on day 144, excited that his new home was now built. The air followed closely behind to tell me about a Pelican Town mayor election coming up. And who was now running against Lewis? It was Morris, of course. How exciting! Having now unlocked the recipe, I crafted a few bone mills and set off my first batch of fertilisers. I foraged at Sprite Springs and caught a couple of new fish there before bringing Jazz a fairy rose for her birthday, completing her friendship. As I walked into town, I found Morris on his mayoral campaign, telling us of how over the past few years, the town fell under disrepair, which had started to be remedied by Joja. Under Morris's rule, this could continue and Pelican Town would be improved with better infrastructure. We can't argue with the facts. The clearance bin had some free strawberry seeds today. I had to pick those up on my way to check out Morris's new house. Something about it is giving giant Joja Cola vending machine, and I am here for it and I can definitely see why he needed so much iron. It was nice to be able to come over for some housewarming drinks, but I couldn't help but notice his fun vending machine. Here, you can trade broken CDs for Super Joja Cola. Look at the buffs on these things! It's like the liquid version of a dewdrop berry, and these last all day too! On day 145, Claire and I went for a long walk. I showed her the entire town, it was quite the adventure. But doing this during summer, I couldn't take my mind off how sweaty I would be. I'm definitely more the winter type, but I'm glad Claire seemed to be enjoying herself. When we returned home, I noticed it was a good luck day, and I was dying to try out the Super Joja Cola. Skull Cabins was calling, but to be honest, it was kinda anticlimactic, but at least I could make some progress with the dino slaying. I was out here looking for the auto grabber, but today it felt like I was getting everything but, although 5 prizzies in a day is nothing to complain about. On day 146, I put away the previous day's loot before picking up the last eggs needed to complete Gus's giant omelette. The cauliflower juice was ready this day, which was convenient because this makes a great love gift for Martin's birthday. Before that though, was the all-important election day. I knew where my vote was going, but I was surprised to find out I don't actually make the choice of who to vote for, so this did make me a little bit nervous. To my relief, Morris had won. The town's reaction was interesting, but we're looking at a new bright future for the valley. Martin happily received his birthday gift at work, then of course I had to congratulate Morris on his major win today. With a goal of improving people's lives, his heart is now in a much better place. I took Claire out for a movie date, getting her a star cookie. The journey of the Prairie King movie was… interesting, but Claire seemed to have enjoyed it, and the cookie too. On day 147, Gus crammed a mini fridge into my mailbox. I had to rearrange some stuff to make room for it, but we make it work for now. Some parts of the farm were still a mess, so I hopped onto the tractor to handle all those trees. Then it was up to Robbins to ask for a house upgrade, because that new piece of furniture made everything just a touch too cramped. The evening was for more cauliflower kegging. This cave was starting to fill out nicely. On day 148, I pet all of my animals and accepted Susan's request for fertilizer. Elliot asked me to join him on his boat for the day, but when I accepted his invite, he suddenly had errands to run. I smell excuses. Over at the pier, Willie showed me a rare and endangered fish. When he asked how life is treating me, I told him I fish every now and again. I wasn't going to tell him I haven't picked up my rod in a while. The first set of batteries was ready on the island, and after accepting a key quest I was never going to do, I returned home to find Morris waiting for me, letting me know of an upcoming large-scale development project. I'm excited to find out what this is going to be. 
I got the bone mill going again because this counts towards Susan's quest, then took a second trip back to the island to set up more sprinklers with more ancient fruit. I made a decent amount of money that night too by selling some of my excess iridium bars. On day 149 I gave Robin some goat cheese as a thank you for upgrading my house. I wanted to go to the island today and on my way to the boat I found Victor hanging out at the graveyard. This was his cat Dewey's grave, who got lost shortly after him and Olivia moved to the valley, and they never found him, so Victor had Robin commission this in his memory. I'm not crying, you're crying. I pulled myself together so I could finish clearing up the island farm, and plant all the taro I had as it was wasteful just sitting in a chest. I didn't want to use more batteries on sprinklers because I was saving them for the shed repair, so I spent some of my key gems on pressure nozzles to be able to plant more ancient fruit, this did take some rearranging though, so the work carried on into day 150, but it was so worth it for the amount more crops I could plant with the same amount of sprinklers. I cleared out the dig site and managed to bring home two sprinklers to add to the farm, then on entering the house I forgot that it was upgraded, so it was time to move the furniture a bit to make it make more sense. Before I could forget, I managed to get a strawberry to marry before her birthday was up. That's another friendship down. Day 151 was the luau, and it was cool to see Morris here as the mayor. Lewis is now the event coordinator, so still a very important role. I did the usual rounds of talking to everyone for the friendship points, then dropped the same thing into the pot as last year. If it ain't broke, I wasn't going to fix it. Another year of carrying that soup. On day 152, I came to observe Susan's melons after completing a quest a couple of days ago. In return, she shared her fermentation methods, making beer, mead and pale ale more expensive. Not that we'll be making much of that, but the gesture was nice. I had an electrifying encounter with Maru before destroying the crib in the house. We don't want Claire getting any ideas. No children, only wine. I also asked Robin to add that basement, because, you know, wine. The rest of this day was spent farming for iron and coal for kegs. Why? Day 153 was a rainy one, but that didn't dampen my mood because right here we have a giant melon. I've rode my tractor into town, I don't know why I hadn't done this before, so that I could pick up another load of melon seeds from Jojomart. I drifted through the fields to collect that harvest, and cut down more trees while I was at it, getting all the replanting done for that afternoon. That gave me time to check on the coop and tidy it up a bit. Man, I really need that auto grabber. Oh, and I didn't forget about Alex's birthday. Day 154 started with a sizeable ancient fruit harvest, perfect for wine day. This will be the first lot of ancient fruit wine we make, and I could not be more excited. Being a Sunday, I traded all my jades for staircases, then despite the bad luck on the cards, I made this a copper mining day, coming home with 180 of the stuff. On day 155, the basement was complete, so I wasted no time in filling it with more casks, which I used to age some pineapple wine I'd been saving up for this moment. All those casks reminded me I might need a source of hardwood, so I planted every mahogany seed I had. I dropped off most of the shed's materials into the chest, the only thing left being the batteries, then added a decking tote situation outside with some weathered paths. Day 156 had a rainy celebration. The Joja Public Works project was now complete. On top of the new infrastructure, there was also the new Joja Emporium, so after admiring all the new paths and streetlights, I had to go check that place out. This is the Joja root version of the Junimo village. This one sells decorations, various dishes amongst other things, but the most exciting thing was the Joja crop seeds. I picked up some of each, I couldn't wait to get growing these, but even though these are quite profitable, they can't be warped through so that limits the amount you can plant. As a bonus, when I came out I got to make a warp here, using a can of Joja Cola of course. I think this one looks amazing in my Nexus. A new week called for a new special request, this time opting for the Curious Substance one. Then I delivered Kent the starfruit he'd been asking for. I decided on having my Joja crops based at Ginger Island for now because the berries could forever regrow there. I had Skull Cabins on my mind for day 157, but not before getting Sam's birthday out of the way because that was enough to fill his friendship. Then it was time to hunt for Lou. There was only one thing I was interested in getting that day. I needed that auto grabber. One long day of mining later and we didn't get one today. A little groggy the next morning, I stepped outside to find Sam waiting there to invite me to his gig. I now had enough batteries to hand in for the shed repair, then add a more pass to this section of the farm. This was the day I tracked down the ectoplasm in the mines, but stayed a few extra hours to farm for more coal and to make use of the monster musk. When I went to hand over the goods, I had to help the wizard remove the Junimo problem. Don't worry sir, you're safe now. I exchanged the ectoplasm for some pure rudeness, what a way to end the day. On day 159, I wanted to make those mini obelisks, but I didn't have enough hardwood. 
As you can probably guess, I spent a lot of this day remedying this issue, but then my journey to the secret woods was interrupted by this picnic with Penny, Jazz and Vincent. Since I was there, I might as well have taught them some things about farming. Then it was back to the grind for hardwood. On day 160, I dug up the green strange doll and traded for a good amount of artifact troves at the desert. I also wanted to look for the yellow strange doll, but I heard the wrong spot. This confused me, so I literally ran up and down the entire desert trying to look for another pond. It might have taken me several in-game hours, but I figured it out in the end. Luckily, I did still manage to return within Clint's opening hours to open those artifact troves, but when I went to donate the new stuff, I found Martin in the library looking for information about his birth parents. I hope he finds what he's looking for someday. After a few trips between Clint's and the museum, I had three artifacts left and just one mineral to complete the museum. I made it to the bus stop in time to go to the city, and now enjoy the show! I got back to town to find some of the villagers enjoying Gus's giant omelette made from none other than thriving eggs. I now pronounce you all united under Joja. The reason I was going in there was because I was on the wild goose chase quest for Birdie. I'd given the Kent the war memento who gave me the gourmet tomato salt for Gus, who gave me the Stardew Valley roast for Sandy, who gave me the TV remote for George, who gave me the Arctic shark for the wizard, who gave me the Wrigley Wham for Willy, who gave me the pirate's locket we were looking for. <gasps> Birdie gave us the fairy dust recipe, but it was the golden walnuts we were interested in. Only four of them left to go. Day 161 should have been a wine day, but first I wanted to make use of all the coffee since I can't buy any. By the time I filled all the kegs, the first cups were done. So this time I went for making some mead and beer since I hadn't done this yet and I wanted to keep some on hand for gifts. I crafted another 28 kegs this day, then as dusk approached, I took the boat to the highlands, where the dwarf we had freed had set up a shop here selling loads of fun decorations and stuff, but I ignored that because only Joja will get my hard iron gold. I handed Lance the crops from behind a tree, then got a cutscene with Marlon who was paying respects to fallen adventurers, inviting me to join him for some special meetings. The witch came by that night to leave me a gift. Didn't she also come here last year? Maybe she just loves Joja eggs. I had a few little crops to harvest on day 162. I crafted an oil machine so I could take care of Lewis's need, then gifted a lemon stone that I'd been saving just for the dwarf's birthday. I hovered around the map looking for Susan because I had some chocolate cake for her when I found out that most of the town were all at Joja Mart. Then it dawned on me. Sale day! The place was absolutely bustling and I used this opportunity to prepare all my seeds for fall since they were all 20% off. I went with my usual setup for a sprinkler for each ingredient and an entire stack of pumpkins. Actually, you know what? Make that two. This was also a good chance to hand out coffee to everyone. I completely forgot about Grandpa's shed till now. How long has Robin been waiting here? The top floor is like a greenhouse. This will house even more ancient fruit. And to the bottom, I'll be adding more casks. On day 163, Lance came over to tell me how happy he was with the monster crops and that he has a reward waiting for me at the outpost. Morris also came to let me know that Aurora Vineyard was for sale, so this is how you get it in the Joja route. To find out the price though, I'll have to find Morris again at some point, but not right now. Now was for making more wine. Even though I'm needing loads of hardwood, I'll be happy to share some with Robin for a project. Then I tracked down the birthday boy on Shearwater Bridge. That's another full friendship. That night, I crammed in another sprinkler on Ginger Island for Ancient Fruit on my way to accept a new key quest, opting for Danger in the Deep. I headed straight to the mines to get started with this on day 164. I got a shirt from a skull which was pretty cool, but you'll have to pry this Joja shirt off my cold dead body if you think I'll stay wearing anything else. A squid also dropped me a prismatic shard, and I passed out on floor 55 which wasn't bad for the first day. The final batch of melons were ready on day 165. I sold all the quality ones as well as the rest of the other crops and kept half the basic melons for processing. I also sold off a lot of my cauliflower because I don't really have many jars and I won't be able to process them all along with all the other stuff I was saving. Since it was a max luck day, I chugged a super joja cola before returning to the mines. Annoyingly, I passed out on floor 89, just one before an elevator. But still, progress is progress. On day 166, I made the mini obelisks with one going by my house and the other was to go by Grandpa's shed but for some reason I go to Ginger Island first? Ah, it was because it was Leo's birthday, and his was one of the friendships we really needed to work on. But with that ticked off the list, back to the mines. I was determined to make it to the bottom today, but I didn't quite do it. So close. On day 167, I dropped off the hardwood for Robin's project that made it to the bottom of the mines before midday. 
I rewarded myself by building the island obelisk, placing it in a temporary spot for now because the mahogany trees were in the way. I went to harvest my personal hardwood supply, but the grass had grown over the spots, meaning the stumps couldn't respawn. The evening was spent hand mowing the grass so that this couldn't happen again. On day 168, I hoovered up the last of the remaining summer crops, before riding my tractor into town to give Lewis the truffle oil. But when I got there, I got the cutscene for Emily's clothing therapy. There were a lot of fun and interesting outfits, but let's be honest, Clint's is clearly the true masterpiece. It's giving summer PJs, but at a beret. I handed Lewis that truffle oil, then went to speak to the real mayor, only to find out that Aurora Vineyard was going to cost us 5 million gold. Oh my god. I doubt we'll make this before the end of this 100 days, so this means we'll be failing the goal of filling our nexus, as I'm pretty sure that that's now the last location for it. We'll get there. One day. I popped to Sprite Springs for my last chance at summer forage, then rounded off the season by farming iron and coal in the mines. Except this year, I actually remembered to attend the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. On day 169, I prepped the fields for the season's big planting. Now that I have the tractor, I didn't have to use any seeds to sacrifice to hold the sprinkler spots because tilling and watering was now much much easier. The farm was full of grass, and with winter now on the horizon, I wanted to save loads of hay, so I blew some of it up, allowing withdrawing from the hopper, so I could keep refilling the silo and my stockpiles. I got a lot of the planting done by the evening, with enough time to set up an entire new field. I am really looking forward to the pumpkin profits this year. On day 170, Claire received a letter with the news that she got the lead part working for an independent studio in Zuzu City. I was happy to see her working towards her dream, and of course, we'll have to go see the performance when it's ready. I popped to the island farm to check for weeds and noticed the red lights indicating the Joja veggies were ready. These are worth a base of about 1200 gold, but since they're not regrowable and you can't walk through them, I probably won't have these again. Whilst I was there, I accepted the four precious stones quests since I seemed to have plenty of prizzies, then it was time to return to the farm to deal with wine day duties. I saved enough bottles for the next round of ageing, then the rest went in the shipping bin. Lasagna gave birth to a baby pig who will be named Orzo, and between the wine, jojo veggies and gold star ancient fruit, we made a great amount of money that night. On day 171, I dropped off those four precious stones and traded my spare walnuts for even more key gems. With them, I bought my third galaxy soul, and some of the crafting recipes. Then the rest of the day was in the volcano farming for cinder shards, and picking up the island warp totem recipe because apparently I didn't have it yet. I made it to the forge that evening with enough shards to upgrade my sword to the infinity blade, and whilst I was there I forged in a random upgrade giving me some extra damage, defence and crit chance. On day 172 I took all my frozen geodes to open at Clint's hoping for that last mineral, the hematite. I had no such luck today, but whilst I was there I asked Clint to upgrade my hoe because it suddenly occurred to me that I hadn't upgraded a single tool in this 100 days. I used this day to try and farm for more geodes, but by the end of the day I got a grand total of 3. On the bright side, Spaghetti blessed us with another baby animal. This new cow will be called Tagliatelli. On day 173 I committed myself to helping Sophia with her fairy garden since I had plenty of time to do it. I bought the fairy seeds right away just to be prepared, then visited Elliot with a pomegranate in hand for his birthday, and now at 8 hearts I'll probably never speak to him again. After handing out coffee to whoever I passed, I added my fairy stones to the crystallariums for the quest, although I forgot to remove the gems already in there, so rest in peace to those jades. Most of the mahogany trees were now matured, so it was time to chop them down, this time only replanting in this bottom section. On day 174, Olivia mailed me a few bottles of nondescript wine which I shoved straight in the shipping bin. I started filling up Grandpa's shed with casks, this'll be a lot of aged wine, but then I ran out of hardwood so it was off to the secret woods to collect more. Whilst I was out on the tractor with my axe in hand, I deforested the majority of West Indus sap. It was kinda therapeutic, but even on the tractor I couldn't clear the entire forest before the end of the day. It was still a wind though, coming back with over 5 stacks of wood. Day 175 was a max luck day, so I got myself ready for Skull Caverns. I was desperate at this point for an auto grabber, to the point where I was disappointed at even the auto petter. But yeah, with the few treasure floors I got, I didn't get it today. But good god, these cactus seeds have got to leave me alone. Day 176 was the start of a new week, meaning new special requests. I decided to help Clint with the outbreak of dust sprites since we could always do with more coal. Which, speaking of Clint's, he was my next stop to pick up my hoe and ask for a better one. I got my yearly checkup with Harvey, who signed me off with a clean bill of health. Then, I hiked to the top of the mountain to pick up this season's forageables. Back at the farm, I made 33 more kegs, and now this part of the cave is officially full! Oh, and I managed to get the rest of the cast done too. 
On day 177, I traded all of my diamonds for triple shot espressos. This was a mistake. You'll see why later, but for now, it was wine day duties. I brought a cup of coffee to Susan, reaching 10 hearts and getting the beloved farmer achievement, so I left and re-entered the house to get the next cutscene. I helped her craft a chest of drawers, and in return, she taught me to craft kegs, casks, and preserves jars with less wood, just in time for already having finished all those casks. This wine day netted us over 350,000 gold, and since we're still making kegs frequently, this number will only be growing. On day 178, I was not giving Clint a break. Time for another hoe upgrade. Seeing Clint reminded me that I had a special request for him, so this day was spent in the mines with monster musks slashing through the little fuzzy dudes. 50 dust sprites only took me a few hours, so I shifted my focus to topping up my dwindling supply of copper ore, but I wasn't getting many nodes today, so I gave up and left. What I could do now was take advantage of blackberry season, berries being my main source of food since I can't just buy a load of salads from Gus. On day 179, I realised my mistake. Berry dust requires diamonds, and I kinda just spent them all, but thankfully it was a max luck day, so I could try and get more at Skull Caverns. I left a rabbit's foot for Jodie's birthday and walked straight to the desert from there. Now, not only was I hoping for that auto grabber, but I was hunting for as many diamonds as possible. I passed out on floor 154 that day, auto grabberless, but I did wake up the next morning with 7 more diamonds and 6 prismatic shards, amongst a whole bunch of other stuff. I added a diamond to the new crystallarium I got to help towards that quest, then I dropped off 4 of yesterday's prismatic shards for Mr. Key's quest again, meaning I can now afford his last two crafting recipes. I found Clint working behind his shop on a weapon for someone who goes by the name of Scyther, but I had no idea what he was talking about, so I ignored that because I was here for the next tool upgrade, except Clint was away today. Instead, I spent my money on another pressure nozzle and some starfruit seeds in the clearance bin. I dropped off what I had for Sophia's fairy garden, then I fished the day away because I still had two levels to go to max this one out. On day 181, I picked up my gold hoe and this time asked for my axe to be upgraded. I rescued some freebies from the sale bin before bringing Abigail a birthday amethyst. Birthdays have been absolutely invaluable with getting these friendships completed. Since I already completed the island ingredients quest a while back, I thought it was finally time to harvest all the taro. Leo and I managed to scare the life out of each other, then we had a lovely little chat about his parrot family. This evening was spent like most of the upcoming ones. I fished on my farm to grind out that XP. We got another baby animal that night, this time a goat named Papadel- Papadel- pa 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 Papardelle. On day 182, many many pumpkins have come to fruition, including quite a few giant ones. I planted even more of the things since we can't seem to get enough, though I did run out of seeds so I drove into town to pick up some more from my wife. Then it was back to fishing once again. On day 183, I found out those Joja berries are worth over 700 gold, making them more expensive than ancient fruit. We might have to invest in more at some point. I did a little bit of decorating, then took the bus to the desert to give Sandy a sweet pea for a birthday. I swapped my shiny new Iridium axe for the final hoe upgrade. Then, for a bit of a change of scenery, I fished up by the lake this time, reaching level 9 that evening. Day 184 was a wine day, but first I had to go to the fair. I only had a short amount of time to put together my display, but I'm sure this year's variety was enough to knock the pants off the competition. <laughs> Lewis, however, was less than impressed, handing me a 750 star token bribe, some of which was spent on decor for the farm. When I got home, I rushed to keg the ancient fruit and made it to bed just in the nick of time. The next day, I brought Lewis's shorts a bit more discreetly, and he acted as if yesterday didn't even happen. I helped myself to my iridium hoe before Clint could even get to the counter, then in asking him to open my frozen geodes, I realised I forgot to trade for artifact trays at the desert, so I had to sort that real quick. I returned to him to get them all open, but I got nothing new for the museum. I was worried about whether I'd be able to complete the museum this 100 days, so I focused my efforts on trying to get more frozen geodes for that last damn hematite, and slaying any dust sprites whilst I was there. I wasn't having much luck today though, so I aimed for the skulls in the quarries instead because these can drop the skeletal hand. I didn't get it today, but the artifact tree was nice. I tried again on day 186 when there were many more of them out to get me, this time with success. I donated some artifacts, leaving the palm fossil and one mineral left for the museum completion. The sale bin had yet more free strawberry seeds, and after picking those up, I handed out coffee to the townies. My afternoon was spent foraging in the desert, picking up all the forgotten truffles, and fishing on the farm again. On day 187, I foraged a random amount of ginger, and found that palm fossil at the dig site. 
I brought Lance a morning cup of coffee and handed Pam a battery she asked for on my way to open all of my Omnigeodes with Clint, looking for that last damn hematite. Spoiler alert, we didn't get it. With the geodes done for today, I could ask Clint to upgrade the watering can, then it was off to Sophia's now that I had the fairy dust ready for her, netting us 35,000 gold. Focusing on all those other things made me realise I'd forgotten about the coop, so I had some tidying to do. I am dying for that freaking auto grabber! Then, in a desperate attempt for more fishing XP, I crafted some crab pots and filled them with bait which I refilled again first thing on day 188. This day was spent in the mines on the endless quest for ores and coal. I was also looking for any frozen geodes I could find, which I didn't get many, but I did score a prismatic shard, even on this bad luck day. On day 189, I collected my watering can and got Clint to open those few geodes. No hematite today, but we did then ask for another upgrade again. I must be Clint's best customer at this point. As I was now running low on coffee, I hang out in the volcano for the day in the hopes of taking home the hot java ring, but apparently this was not the day. The silver lining was being able to pick up the deluxe retaining soil recipe with the cinder shards farmed that day. On day 190, we had some lights letting me know that the next set of Joja berries were ready. For some reason, I randomly remembered that I hadn't picked up the reward from Lance for the monster crops a while back, so I grabbed that diamond wand which should come in handy for the crimson badlands one day, as this thing fully yeets enemies away from you. As a thank you for the thank you, I gave Lance one of my golden pumpkins, and whilst I was out this way, I thought I might as well go meet Isaac for the first time and have him show me the map, which, let's be honest, I'm not going to remember. I chickened out of doing the Badlands today, instead walking in on an argument about Robin's latest carpentry project. Of course, I reassured her that the aesthetics are perfect. It was the sale again today, but what I was really excited about was the beet seeds on clearance. These will be reserved for Lewis's fridge. I didn't pick up any other seeds today though, hopefully I'll remember for the next sale in winter. Before the day was over, I rushed over to the island to get the beet seeds in the ground ready for a future date. Day 191 was a wine day, but this time I also kegged the joja veggies and joja berries. Between the kegging and the ancient fruit harvest, this occupied most of my day, but I rounded this one off by clearing up some of my farm quarry to increase the chances of frozen geode spawning. Between the wine and the ancient fruit, I made nearly a million that night. On day 192, I was out for a relaxing morning by the bridge, but it seems like Camilla woke up and chose mischief. She spoke some sort of gibberish, then let me know that the puppyfish now have more friends to play with before promptly disappearing. That was not my priority right now though, because today was George's birthday and I had an Iridian quality leap for him. That's another friendship down. I gave Clint my watering can one last time, then got the desert obelisk built for easier access to skull caverns. I also rearranged them to where I really wanted them. On day 193, I gave Gus an early delivery of the lobster he requested and traded a single broken CD for a Super Joja Cola. I walked in on Harvey working on some prescriptions, which of course I swore to secrecy, handing him a coffee to help him with his work. I feel like I've been to the mines too many times now, but that hematite was still evading me, so time for more geode farming I guess. And with 13 geodes this time, it turned out to be slightly more successful. My watering can was done on day 194, freeing up Clint to open the geodes, but still, no hematite. I harvested my cranberries and refilled my crab pots, then spent my Friday afternoon fishing at Shearwater Bridge. I caught the kitty fish and the puppy fish amongst other things, but those are super difficult so I moved to the river where things weren't much better. Fish is so annoying. But I did catch the razor trout, finally. What is that? An invasive species released by someone. It has a pattern on its body that heavily resembles the letter J. <laughs> no way. I of course had to show this to the local fisherman, who seemed impressed that I managed to catch it. On my way home I got that cutscene with Lewis and Marnie, but uh, Lewis's car is gone? How long has that been gone? Was this just a bug for this cutscene? I have so many questions. Not about the relationship though, we all know about that. And yes, I'll still keep it a secret. Day 195 was an enormous pumpkin harvest, and it was the last big harvest of the year. I was excited to be shipping over 1500 pumpkins on this day, and went back for all but one of each giant crop. That harvest reminded me to go pick up all the truffles, then I fished up by the lake for the day till the Spirit Sea Festival began. This year's maze was very long and really quite difficult, but I made it to the loot in the end getting three golden pumpkins, making the efforts much more worth it, and on this night we got so much gold from all those pumpkins. On day 196 I made use of my desert obelisk because today was to be a skull caverns run. Being a Sunday I could trade for more staircases. Let's see if I can get the autograbber today, but also I was here for omnigeodes because these two can contain the hematite. 
Funnily enough, I got two more auto petters. What's going on? I never get these when I actually want them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I held out a lot of hope for this day, and 11 whole treasure rooms and 247 floors later, I passed out at 2am, gravelous once again. What do I gotta do to get me another one? And no, I'm not buying one from Marnie. On day 197, I chucked the wizard's gift on the floor because I still had a backpack full of loot. I got another 33 kegs placed in Grandpa's shed, then wanted to drop into the sewers for Krobus' birthday, but had to break up a fight between him and a dwarf. Hopefully, this Iridium-quality horseradish should cheer him up. I snapped up the discarded strawberry seeds from the Joja clearance bin, as well as the artichoke seeds, in prep for next year. Now that it was winter, there wasn't too much to distract me from my level 10 fishing goal, so this is what I did for the rest of the day. But it got late, so I started to head home annoyingly close to that max level. Day 198 was your average wine day, but also did give a gift of a new baby pick, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce this one for fear of butchering it. Conchiglie. On day 199, I caught the final fish I needed to hit level 10 fishing. A huge relief. I had another broken CD, so I traded it again for a Super Joja Cola, then I rushed around town handing out gifts to the people I needed more hearts with. When I got to Sebastian's, I was invited to join a run of Solarian Chronicles, guessing my way through it to a C rating. Then, it was back to the mines for another agonising hunt for frozen geos, leaving for the day with just 9 more. For my level 10 fishing profession, I went for pirate, staying true to my inner loot goblin, and then on day 200, I rushed straight over to Clint's with all my frozen and omni geodes. I sold stuff directly to him when my inventory got full, but even with all of those, the last mineral room remained elusive. I wasn't giving up. I had tunnel vision for this thing. I came back to him later that day with another 12 frozen geodes, and on the second to last one, I finally got it. I almost couldn't believe it for a while there, but hello Gunther, one star drop please. Phew. I really wanted that unforgettable taste of Joja Corp again one last time before the end of this 100 days. I rewarded myself for all that hard work with a nice dip in my hot springs. I couldn't be happier with how much we've achieved in these 100 days, but for now, we go to sleep and get ready for a farm tour. Let's start with our fully upgraded but not very well furnished house. Did we expect any different from me though? Maybe we can look at decorating this next time. The backyard didn't really change too much beside a few new machines, but it was all the new cave kegs I was really excited about. Taking the mini obelisk brings us to Grandpa's restored shed. I'm planning to fill all these casks when the current batch of aged wine is done. Upstairs, we have even more kegs, with a second greenhouse type situation filled with ancient fruit. My slightly more Joja themed barn is now filled with fun animals who get a reminder every day that life's better with Joja. And the coop next door is now auto gravelous, but even with all the mess, the animals in here have been ordered to thrive. We've expanded the crop fields massively this year, now including the totally not genetically modified giant crops. I said at the end of the last video that I wanted this greenhouse to be full of ancient fruit, and we managed to pull that off. This area also got an update with more decking, a mill, some seed makers, and most importantly, the tractor, which has been so fun to try out. Over to the Ginger Island farm, which I forgot to tour last time. This has another wild amount of ancient fruit crops, but it does need decorating somehow. As for the house, it's still completely empty and I don't want to talk about it. I then went to check on the perfection progress to notice I kind of forgot about those last four walnuts, so we failed that goal. But our next video will be focused on how close we can get to 100% perfection. I played 300 days of Stardew Valley Expanded, Joja Edition. This video will be the conclusion of our expanded Joja run, and we've got a couple of fun new mods added which will be linked in the description, but don't check them yet as these contain spoilers. For this video, I've only got one thing on my mind, perfection. If you enjoy 100 day style content, please hit that like button. These videos take a lot to put together, so this would really be helping us out. And with that out of the way, let's jump right in. On day 201, I had Eclair her favourite flower and she kindly cooked me a big breakfast. On my first trip into town, I was greeted with a new Morris cutscene who was missing his father. Apparently, Joja didn't even give him the time off for the funeral, which is awful. And this isn't even his gravestone, but at least he's found a place he can go to grieve. I'm glad I walked past what I did, because then we could be there for Morris. After handing a gift to Martin, the weirdest thing happened. I stopped to speak to Morris again, and he duplicated? The hell? I think this has something to do with a newly installed mod. You'll see later. I worked a bit on friendships today, then stopped in at Robin's to ask for my first fish pond. This will help with the shipping and cooking ingredients. 
I'm also back to checking the travelling merchant again because we still haven't shipped a cherry and I'll only be able to get the sapling from her or the Joja sale bin. No sapling today, but they did have the caviar so I won't need to use the pond for sturgeons now. I scored that on the way to hand over an iridium bar to the wizard he asked for by mail. He paid pretty well for the thing too. After a busy gifting day, I went to wind down at the saloon and the place was absolutely packed. It was Olivia who called me over and we had a good little chat till Emily could come over and take the order. I was shown the familiar saloon cocktail menu, this time trying out the Red Moon, which is apparently Robin's favourite. I worked on the friendship of everyone there, then headed home to bed after a very social day. On day 202 I made an ostrich incubator which I struggled to pick a spot for in the barn. I was about to handle some fishing when I bumped into Caroline whose friendship still needed some work. I was about to just give her a goat's cheese but then I thought I should grab an iridium summer spangle instead. By the time I got back she'd vanished, somewhere nowhere to be seen on the map. So that plan goes out the window. Well, I suppose I can't procrastinate the fishing any longer. And in doing so, I was seeing that the pirate profession was starting to pay off, and Willie seemed to be happy with the result. Though let's be honest, I was only really doing this for the friendship. I'd had my fishing warm up, so now it was time to take on the glacier fish. It took a little while to appear, but to be fair, this one was pretty well behaved. That evening, Krobus was trying to teach other shadow people to be nice to humans, but they got a little bit too close so I freaked out and left. I took a deep breath and went right back in because I still had time on my seafoam pudding, so I was here to catch the mutant carp. There were also a few fish to catch in the bug lair too. Day 203 had even more fishing, this time in the Crimson Badlands, but first I had to clear a little safe area for myself. It's a pain trying to do anything here that isn't killing stuff. I went to do a bit of exploring, but not at that cave because I didn't have a prizzy with me, but I found this iridium area that I'd not seen before, but it was too busy really to harvest anything, so I left for a much calmer evening of foraging at Sprite Springs. That night, Rigatoni gave birth to a baby goat. This one's name will be Farfalle. On day 204 I got an invite in the mail to the showing of Claire's movie. I checked on my ginger island farm which had some beets ready, then I was reminded of the festival of ice. But before going, I wanted to get the ostrich egg. Only problem is, I hadn't got the journal scrap yet, and neither the egg nor the walnut would show up without it. I turned those beets into more seeds, then it was festival time. Travelling merchant was here so I browsed her wares, picking up a few bits of furniture for the house. I smashed this year's fishing contest, bagging a nice bundle of goodies, and before going to bed that night, I put up some of the decor. On day 205, Leah was hanging out on my doorstep waiting to give me that sculpture. I'm not quite sure what to make of that, but I slapped it down next to my fridge for now. I had my daily Joja Cola, then since it was wine day, I used the opportunity to make another big batch of coffee. I handed out cheese to the beachgoers whilst on the island to harvest my wine crops. I accepted another order of precious stones for Mr. Key, then it was time to deal with the next lot of wine before deciding on the butterfish being my fishpond fish. Day 206 was Sebastian's birthday, so I handed him a frozen tear in bed. That's another friendship off the list. I gave Pam a bit of a fright and it seems she returned the favour. She was feeling down about her dead end job and stuff and out of curiosity I told her maybe if she was nicer things would be different because it's not what I'd usually say and she seems like the tough love type. But it seems this was the wrong option because I lost four entire hearts. Her friendship was full before but hers is pretty easy to fix. I started right away with a glass of Apology Pale Ale, continuing with gifting for the rest of the day. Although I did stop to try out a new mod which was the Joja Lottery mod. Tickets cost 500 gold and you also redeem them here too. The guide says to ship it to find out if I win or not so I did and that was the last I heard about that. That evening the whole town gathered for Claire's movie premiere, The Thief of Justice. It was a great movie and I was very very proud of her and all the villagers seemed to enjoy it too. On day 207 I traded a few prizzies for key gems which I used to buy key seasoning but accidentally also bought a hat. I headed into Jojamart that day, carefully sneaking in a bouquet for Mr. Morris which he seemed very happy to accept. Let's be honest, he's our true favourite person. When I went to say hi to Claire on my way out, she told me not to show any affection at work or she'll get scolded. Interesting, this explains a lot. With the shed now full of kegs, I decided to have this wood path area as the overflow for more wine. Then it was back to the bus stop to give Pam another apology pale ale. It was over to the island to say hi to Lance, but on my way back I noticed that I missed that Gus was here. I really wish Gus had a set day that he comes to Ginger Island, but I made up for this miss by building the two final obelisks. On day 208 I cleared out the coop before slashing all the fibre in the jungle hoping for that journal scrap. No luck just yet though, so back to running around town with gifts, sometimes losing track of what I'd already done. Marnie taught me how to make cheese wheels, then I climbed to the summit to forage the abundance of flowers. 
I spent day 209 in the volcano destroying rocks hoping for that next journal scrap. Thankfully, it wasn't that long before I got it, and that's another golden walnut as well. The walnut room was still showing three left, so I asked the parrot where next, and it just kind of squawked. How very helpful. To add insult to injury, I missed Gus again, just by a hair. I had a feeling something went wrong with the walnuts, so I used the recount command to check for missing ones, and what do you know, I've got them all! I've never had this happen before, so I'm really grateful this command exists. On day 210, Shane showed me the blue chickens he'd been raising, and of course, we had to take one home. With the coop animals being named after movie characters, we went for the name Little. I was overjoyed to see the cherry sapling for sale at the travelling merchant today, that's another part of the shipping that could be taken care of in time. I gave Morris some cheese which got us to 10 hearts again, then returned home to plant my cherry sapling, then used a rain totem to call on some winter rain, not realising that this won't work because tomorrow is the night market and it can't rain on festivals. I got a cutscene with Morris and Pierre, noting that more customers are moving to shop at Joja, so Morris had pulled some strings to offer Pierre a job as assistant manager, if he was to close down his store, and the job will come with a pay rise and a bunch of perks. Obviously, Pierre was far too proud to accept this offer, complaining that they sell low quality produce. Well Pierre, joke's on you because you've been selling all my Joja produce. Being a new gifting week, the evening was spent handing out goodies, but I did also fish again in the sewers because I forgot the radioactive bass the other day, adding that and my razor trout to the fish tank in my house. On day 211 I was feeling extra thirsty so I grabbed three cheap Joja cola which I chugged before even leaving the store. I made some key season sea foam pudding for the extra stat boost, then popped over to Ginger Island to give Leo a duck feather. As I got back to the beach, I got a cutscene where we convinced Leo to move to Stardew Valley. We were happy that he could make friends with the other kids now. I harvested my coffee and my beets went straight into seeds to replant again. It was now the night market, so I picked up the next painting and decided it was time to take on those submarine fish. I got several spookfish pretty easily and bagged myself a midnight squid, the blobfish was a little bit more shy though, not showing up until almost 1am. But hey, that's the summary now complete. Wine day duties were calling on day 212, with the addition of 16 more kegs. I suddenly remembered I'd forgotten about the aged wine, so I rushed to refill the casks with enough time to get to the night market and buy the next painting. With another proposal on the horizon, I decided to divorce Claire, and now she was gone I needed to wipe her memory so I could befriend her again. We'll just pretend none of this ever happened. On day 213, I welcomed Leo to the valley before picking up my first blue egg. I started rebuilding my friendship with Claire with the sunflower, then caught Harvey taking part in the weekly aerobics class. I still don't really know why he's so ashamed, but since he asked, we won't tell anyone. As I passed by Lewis, he actually admitted that the town had become more developed since Morris took charge. I knew he'd come around too. I spent a bit of this day handing out gifts, then topped up my wood supply by taking down the majority of Cindersat Forest and I did remember to go pick up the last night market painting of the year. On day 214, Gunther invited me to a special artifact showing at the museum today. Let's hope I remember to attend. I used another rain totem now that the night market was over, then continuing with trying to get all the fishing done, I dropped down in the mines with a dish of the sea to start with that lava eel, which took a few hours to show up. Annoyingly, my fishing buff ran out before I could even catch the ice pit, but I still succeeded nonetheless. I stayed in the mines this evening to work on the monster slaying. On day 215, I picked up all the beach forage on my way to the old mariner to pick up another mermaid's pendant. I took this straight to Morris at his house who seemed really happy to accept, and in a few days I'll be married once again. I bought the day's brassiere recipe from Robin, then got a cutscene with Alex at the train station, where he told me the reasons he started working out daily. Good for you Alex, couldn't be me. I was up this way to catch the void eel and the void salmon at the witch's hut, and whilst I still had some time on my seafoam pudding, I fished at Ginger Island looking for the shiny Lunaloo, which, if you remember in the last series, gave me so much trouble, but it seemed significantly easier this time. Either that, or I was just better prepared. On day 216, I accidentally left the house by farm totem before going to visit Lance at his outpost where I accompanied him on his field study. We observed the local wildlife, then he reminded me about the existence of the gemfish, which is horrifically hard to catch, and I still hadn't got it yet. Well, no time like the present. This fish was still as annoying as I remember, but I still managed it first time. I made my escape to the mushroom area where I caught the daggerfish, but my success ended at the desert where I failed to encounter the scorpion carp before it disappeared for the day. We made up for this though by delivering Gus the coconut he asked for, and picking up the two cooking recipes it seems I've forgotten earlier. I rounded off the day with a nighttime Joja Cola and went to bed. On day 217, I replaced the ready beets with more monster crops to ship. 
I got another blue egg which I shoved in a mayo machine for blue mayo, then carried loads of rabbit's feet around town for the start of a new gifting week. And even though I feel like I've gotten better at keeping up with the gifting, friendship game was still feeling long and tedious because this is all I literally did for the entire day. Aside from cutting grass for my starving animals that is. Day 218 was the big wedding, and as of the 22nd of winter, Morris was now my husband. We really are united under Georgia. My ostrich egg was due to hatch the next day, but the barn was full, so I sold Tagliatelli to make room. It occurred to me I'd never gotten any pine tar, so I set up a few tappers on the trees in the backwoods. Then it was back to gifting once again. I found Pierre's secret stash, which I decided to be nice about and keep this secret a secret. When I went into Georgia Mart to give Claire her gift, the crowds reminded me that it was Georgia Day. I made sure to pick up some Georgia Cola lights for the house, as well as next year's spring seeds, which will be nothing but cauliflower. I branded my house with more Georgia Cola goodness, then to speed up the keg production I started a second oat resin farm, fertilising them too so they'll actually grow this season. Day 219 was your typical wine day, except I did get a cutscene where Gunther asked me to accompany him to the mines to look for some artefacts, basically as a bodyguard. I did accept because I love me an adventure, but we're not going tonight so I'll come back whenever I remember. It's supposed to be tomorrow but we'll see about that. I'd now accumulated enough beets to put in the mayor's fridge, but it didn't work which made me realise I actually hadn't started the quest yet so... I brought the battery to the bus tunnel, then the rainbow shell to the train station, then the beets to Lewis's fridge, then the solar essence to the sand dragon which allowed me to collect the club card from my house. On day 220 I got a mail reminding me of the feast of the winter star. My secret friend this year will be Morris which is the best news we could have ever had. The ostrich egg had finally hatched, and following on with the pasta theme, this will be named Capoletti. Now that I had the club card, I could access the casino, and I'll be needing this for the alien rare crow. I allowed myself a purchase of 500 key coins, then I sat at the slots till I received a pretty sizeable win. More than enough for that rare crow, which got its new home in this little empty space. The afternoon went on Ginger Island, placing paths around the place to try and curb the randomly growing weeds, and filling some of the remaining area with grass. On day 221 I got a golden piggyback in the mail to commemorate us having made 10 million gold. I also got the deluxe scarecrow recipe in the mail. I had enough time that morning to finish pathing the island farm, then it was off to celebrate Yobamus. I spoke to everyone who needed friendship points, then brought a golden pumpkin to Morris as my chosen gift. Demetrius was my gift giver this year and he got me a blackberry cobbler. An interesting choice because if he knew me at all he'd know I don't even like blackberries, but I did appreciate the gesture. I did end up re-gifting it to Morris though. On day 222 I played some Genomo Kart because for whatever reason I picked up that stupid key quest to get over 50,000 points. I'm just as bad if not worse than before so I got through about 10 attempts before I got bored and left. I commissioned Robin for a second fish pond then started making use of this empty room in my house with some crystallariums. Winter is a good time to decorate, but since I can only spend money at Georgia, my options were pretty limited. Luckily, the Emporium has some lovely greenery I can pick up. I started day 223 right with a cold can of Georgia Cola. I added more wood paths to this area, not entirely sure why I didn't do this earlier. Then I started filling in some of the empty areas with some decorative plants, which will definitely look better in the spring. Gunther had now been waiting outside the Adventurers Guild for four days in the freezing cold, so I thought it was about time I should help him. Sorry Gunther. I succeeded in saving him from an evil slime with my bare hands. No infinity blade necessary. Gunther seemed to be pleased with this find and I'll be getting some form of payment in the mail. What I really came to the guild for was to check on the monster slayer goals. I now only had one single pepper X and 28 magnum sprays, so I went straight up to the volcano for the remainder of the day to start taking care of this. As a bonus, we got a shiny new deluxe pirate's hat. I put that thing straight on my noggin. I'm sure this will bring us more loot. On day 224, I got a 20 gram payment for Gunther for yesterday's services. I came home to pick up my daily Joja Cola, then since it was a great luck day, I decided to go for its Gold Caverns run. It was still the morning when I found that last dino to slay, leaving the rest of the day to look purely for loot. And that auto grabber, which we didn't get today, but I did get two auto petters in a row. I was so engrossed in my loot goblin ways that I forgot what day it was and passed out dreaming of grandpa. <laughs> It was assessment time, and we'd done Grandpa proud. Thriving Farm was indeed thriving again, and that's what we'll continue to do. I stepped outside to the wonderful sight of four candles on day 225, but also Leah was at my door to invite me to her art show. We might not make it today though, because a new year and a new season means we have a bunch of planting to do. 
I did miss the show by the time I was done, so I just added tapas to those trees from the other day, and cleaned up this area ready to be decorated in the future. On day 226, I spent the whole day harvesting ancient fruit, expanding my kegs, and making more wine. But I did make time to go say hi to Sophia, and I agreed to come back tomorrow to help her restore her parents' bedroom. I went home to bed that night to some healthy wine day profits. On day 227, I was notified that we'll be getting a new arrival in the valley. Morgan was coming to study with the wizard, and they'll be arriving tomorrow. I handed over a golden pumpkin to Lance, meaning his friendship is now complete. Then I noticed the shady guy was on the Joji Emporium roof again, so I went to check out his stock. The galaxy soul was cool to see, but what I couldn't pass up was the golden egg for 1 million gold. If you don't know, you can usually only get these after you achieve perfection. I picked it up because I'd never actually had one before. After a bit of a gifting spree, I stopped in at Robin's to buy the next Brazier recipe, and when I returned home I found Lance waiting for me. Apparently I sensed him at the front door. Maybe it's got something to do with the fact that he's right in front of my face? Anyway, he asked me to meet him on Ginger Island at my earliest convenience. Now was not convenient though, because I had to take advantage of this rainy day to try and catch the legend, and somehow I managed it on my first try. I also caught the frog because this needed rainy weather too. Day 228 was Kent's birthday, and I was feeling generous enough to give him one of my several prismatic shards. Only two hearts to go! I finally remembered to go help Sophia with her parents' bedroom, then forage the new summit flowers before catching the grass carp in the secret woods. As it grew dark, I went to meet Lance at Ginger Island, who showed me his warp to Fable Reef. I went to meet the members of the First Slash Guild, where Lance showed off the monster crops I grew, which they seemed pretty impressed with. I got returned to the island for now, but we'll be back again soon. Martin tried to make his move on Claire, only to get absolutely friendzoned. Poor guy. Then, I ended this day with a quick visit to the dwarf. On day 229, Sophia stopped by to thank me for the fairy garden. She'll now supply us more sprinklers, but that's irrelevant since we can't swing gold there. The wizard came by right after to let me know I can warp to first slash from his nexus, and this was something I did want to hear. I also got a mail from Sophia containing a bottle of aged blue moon wine. This was a huge deal because I can't actually buy any from her. It's plus 7 luck and it's very expensive. I'll be keeping this for a future Skull Caverns run. This is the day I went to meet Morgan. I'll need to start on his friendship sooner rather than later, and I welcomed him to the valley with a void egg. I headed back to Fable Reef to forage and fish, coming away with a torpedo trout I needed for the fishing star drop. Then, whilst my head was in fishing mode, I drove to West Cindersap to catch the king salmon. On day 230, I went back to Fable Reef to pick up the golden ocean flower to ship. Then, I handed Morgan another void egg in time for the end of this gifting week. This feels like deja vu because I then drove back to West Cindersat to fish again, except this time I was here for the Dorado. I caught it by the late afternoon, so that's another off the list. Then, I went home to pick up the year's first truffles. On day 231, I gave Morris my second golden ocean flower. I saved this just for him. I planned to head to the desert to catch the scorpion carp, which luckily was the first fish I saw. Then I gifted Morgan a void egg for the third day in a row. When I went to find Gunther and Martin, I found most of the town admiring the museum. It was nice to see some life in the place with all the work we put into restoring this collection. But with that now over, I could continue with my gifting spree. All that calmness and gifting made me crave adventure, so the rest of this day was in the volcanoes fighting magma sprites to hit that monster slayer goal. On day 232, Scarlet made her way to my farm to tell me she'll be around the valley more often, and I can visit her up in Grampleton. No! Another person to build friendship with? This is starting to feel like a moving target, but it should be the last. I got a Galdoran gem in the mail from Gunther. Fancy! But this will just sit in a chest to be forgotten about. I bought the seaweed salad recipe from Willy, which is the last of my gold that he'll be getting, then I accepted the elegant reception quest from Olivia since I had enough starfruit to make her wine with. Kent was in need of a new hobby, so I told him the Adventurers Guild was worth checking out, and he decided to go for it. Good for you, Kent. This was another day of gifting, but this time I actually caught Gus while he was on Ginger Island, allowing me to pick up that damn cooking recipe. Finally! My strawberries came to fruition on day 233. That harvest was followed by wine day duties. Then on day 234, I found Scarlet over at Andy's farm with a gift while she was helping with the strawberries. I bought another Brazier recipe from Robin before finding Olivia snooping in Victor's diary, which I thought was really rude. Then she literally screamed at him, ruining the surprise he had about his apprenticeship for his dream job. I was feeling kind of awkward after that, so I snuck through the house straight to the cellar to drop off the cheeses for Olivia. That was far too intense, so I escaped to Ginger Island to fish up that baby Lunaloo. On day 235, I visited Scarlet at her home with some goat's cheese, and from there I headed to Robin's to ask for a shed. 
I thought I had the perfect spot, but it was just one tile too thin, which was very unsatisfying, so I moved it to the right for now. I caught my first ever shad at the river, not sure how it's taken this long. Then it was over to Marnie's who was supposed to be selling the blue fried egg recipe, but she still didn't have it. For now, I focused on what I could do, which was catch the eel at the beach. I added this to my fish pond because we'll be needing multiple of these for recipes. On day 236, I agreed to help Andy and Scarlett with Andy's strawberry jelly, carefully transferring the produce into the jars in his cellar. I bought the stuff bare for sale at the travelling merchant. This is how I have to get most of my furniture to decorate the house with, since Jojo doesn't actually sell any. This got me in a decorating mood, so I added a few more paths to Ginger Island so it felt a bit more finished. Then I stopped procrastinating with the cooking and just got started, because this is something I usually end up leaving till last. But I did have to take a break to pick up more ingredients from Jojo Mart. By the end of the day, I'd made significant progress, but I was getting too lazy to put the food away when my inventory got full, so I just started chucking it on the floor. The cooking continued into day 237, but when I went outside to get more ingredients, I realised all my cauliflowers were ready. Thanks to the tractor, I managed to get them all replanted with enough time to make the egg festival. This year, I tried a slightly different route, and the changing positions of the eggs definitely made it harder, but I still got just enough to bag that win. Day 238 started with yet more cooking. The golden chicken had now hatched. A special chicken was deserving of a very special name. The ultimate chicken. With what I grabbed from the coop, I made a very cursed looking blue omelette. Then, since it was a Sunday, I made a point of going to trade my jades with staircases. I also took a quick trip to the island to plant artichokes which I needed for shipping and for cooking ingredients, and came back later to refill the crab pots because we were in need of another lobster. I bought some magic bait to try and speed up the fishing, although 100 was probably overkill. This meant I could now catch the octopus as well as another squid for cooking. On day 239, I cooked up yesterday's catches and visited Morris's old house to obtain another Super Jojo Cola from a disc I fished up yesterday. Robin had now finished the shed, so I bought another Brazier recipe before collecting flowers from Sprite Springs. It was gifting time once again. I managed to complete Leo's friendship and had been making good and steady progress on the rest. Another wine day rolled round on day 240, but it was a max luck day so we'll handle that tomorrow because today was the Skull Caverns. I had some magic rock candy with me and chugged the entire bottle of aged blue moon wine. I needed all the luck I could get because today I really wanted to come home with that second auto grabber. We had a good few treasure floors this day with some mediocre stuff, but on lucky number 7, here it was. That second auto grabber was now mine. As you can tell by my mouse movements, I was far too excited about this. In a strange turn of events, I got another one on my next treasure floor. I'm feeling a bit mocked. The rest of this run was pretty uneventful, passing out on floor 246 for the day, and it was just lovely to get a mail from my husband still billing me for said pass out. I put one of the auto grabbers in my coop, then it was time to deal with the new wine day Wednesday, which, to be fair, I think has quite a nice ring. Day 242 was the last day of salmonberry season, which I'd forgotten about till now. I stopped into the sewers to see Crobus whilst I was out this way, but there seemed to be some sort of shadow people meeting. They wanted to make peace with me, but first I had to bring 60 void souls. This will be quite the task. I dropped off the starfruit wine to Olivia's cellar, paying me 80,000 gold for the goods for the reception. Most of this day was focused on gathering salmonberries and handing out gifts, but I did stop to help Leah reach some fruit from a tree. Must be all that Joja Cola. And I gave the trash bear a horseradish they were asking for. On day 243, I headed to the Crimson Badlands for Void Souls, making sure to pick up the elixir recipe from Isaac too. This will take a few trips because there weren't that many Void Souls around this day, and I decided to take down that giant corrupted serpent as well, but then ended up getting killed by a random mummy. The real killer though was losing all my rabbit's feet, all my coffee, and all my blackberries. What am I supposed to choose from Marlin? When I crawled into the Adventurer's Guild to make the decision, I got a cutscene with him because of the void shard I collected from that giant serpent. The corruption was causing some concern, so we had to go see Rosmodius immediately. Seems like he could sense it as soon as we arrived. He tried to decipher it, but unfortunately it just self-destructed. But he did manage to find out someone made it with the intent of causing this corruption, and they were inconceivably powerful. This is about all we know, because I don't think this story continues until a future update. Back at Marlon's, it was time to pick an item to recover. I ended up going with the triple shots because I'd only just used all my coffee on them. I now have salmon berries to replace the blackberries, and the other stuff I'll just accumulate in time. To protect myself better in the Badlands, I merged a crab shell ring with the vampire ring, then popped to the Adventurer's Guild again to sell excess rings, weapons and boots. 
On day 244, I collected my triple shots from the mail and harvested the artichokes from Ginger Island. The gold ones went straight in the shipping bin, then it was back to my home kitchen to cook up the recipes which needed them. That blue fried egg was still the only recipe I hadn't learned, and I'd been checking Marnie's frequently, but it never showed up. I couldn't find any info about this online, aside from some others having the same issue, so for disclosure, I ended up using a debug command to learn it because this would have prevented perfection. On the bright side, we had Olivia's reception to attend today, which increased friendship with everyone who attended. I cheered up Martin at work with a rabbit's foot, another friendship down, so now I've only got the Dwarf, Claire, Morgan and Scarlet to focus on. I decided to handle the trash bear today, handing them a small mouth bass. The next thing they wanted was a parsnip soup, which luckily I'd saved from my cookathon. But apparently that wasn't enough to satisfy them, and now they were after some artichoke dip. This one I did have to remake because I did sell the morning's one earlier. After that meal, the trash bear kindly cleaned up the sewer area, then dropped off a steak for Dusty. On day 245, I accidentally gifted my husband a Joja Cola when I went to drink it. Morris, that wasn't for you! Looks like this trip to the Badlands will not be fueled by Joja Cola. Alicia had the other two elixir recipes for sale, then I got to work collecting void souls again. I also tried to brave the cave, but I was quickly overrun and died. This time, I didn't lose anything, so I healed up and tried again. I wasn't giving up this time. I killed the bulk of the mummies, then snuck past the rest into the cave. I'm pretty sure on my first playthrough they had loads of treasure chests I could sell, but there weren't any in here this time. I put a prismatic shard in the slot of the treasure chest and received the galaxy slingshot. This makes iridium ore a more powerful ammo, but I'm literally never going to use this. I picked up every last void soul I could find, then returned home to harvest my strawberries and do a quick gifting spree for the start of a new gifting week. I got a surprise visit from Mr. Key on day 246 to say he's been watching me. A little creepy, but he was impressed so he added a Stardew Valley expanded song to my jukebox. That's great and all, but I play my game in silence. I dropped off a sunflower to Claire at work who reminded me that it was sale day, so I picked up a buttload of melons in prep for summer, as well as some free strawberry seeds from the clearance bin. I faced the dangers of the Badlands again to pick up more void souls, coming away that day with another 21. Now that's more like it. I wanted to ask Robin for another shed, but she wasn't there so I left to make more furnaces on the farm. I wanted to up my smelting game to be able to sell more iridium bars towards the golden clock. On day 247, I was back in the Badlands again for even more void souls. All that collecting was beginning to pay off because I only needed three more now to complete that quest. I crafted 20 wooden lampposts because the farm was lacking in lighting, which was a way to slowly continue working on decoration, but I ended up needing to make 20 more. So many batteries! Day 248 was another Wine Wednesday, but I'd forgotten that today was the flower dance. Once I'd finished harvesting Ginger Island, I headed over for the dance, picking Claire as my dance partner to bag some extra friendship points. It did feel kinda weird though. After the festival, I rushed to try get the fruit in the kegs, but ended up passing out before finishing them, so we'll miss out on a few bottles this week. Day 249 started with a big old cauliflower harvest, and our last for the season. I planted some garlic because I needed to craft the oil, then it was down to the forest with the tractor for some mass deforestation for the rest of the day. On day 250, I bought the last brassiere recipe from Robin and got around to asking her for a second shed. I went and got the last void souls from the Badlands, which I took straight to the sewers to hand into Crobus. He didn't have much to say though because it's Friday. With that huge task accomplished, I had a relaxing afternoon harvesting truffles. Wait, truffle? <laughs> I think that was meant to say truffles. <laughs> I also sorted out my crab pot since I hadn't got that lobster yet. On day 251, I decided I still wanted to put a shed in this spot, so I filled the extra tile width with spare casters decoration in prep for when Robin can build it. I grabbed the last bit of forage from Sprite Springs for the season, then I made a quick stop at the island to check the crab pots which had finally grazed me with a lobster. I cooked the lobster bisque right away, leaving only that stupid fried egg recipe. I did try one more time to get it from Marnie, but I had no luck, so this is the day I learned it via debug. But to make sure the recipe still cost me something, I yeeted four iridium bars into a fish pond, which are worth about 6,000 gold. I went straight back to the house to make that blue fried egg, and there it was. The gourmet chef achievement. That night, Krobus was at my door, letting me know that their friends were doing something with those void souls, and I should join them in the mines, so I went right away. This place was a bit scary, but also kinda cool. I'm not entirely sure what was going on here, but with some magic, I'm guessing they were retrieving the little voice spirit children, and I was happy to see them reunited with their loved ones. 
The conflict between humans and shadow people was over, and now we won't be able to harm each other anymore. On day 252, I gathered coal and iron from the mines for the entire day as a productive way to use the last day of the season. Then, it's time for summer. On day 253, I started tilling the fields when I noticed the alien capsule blocking my way and accidentally untilled the field in the process. Being the first day of a season, I spent the day covering my entire farm in melons. And thanks to the tractor, I still had time that evening to add a bunch of kegs to my house. On day 254, I spent the whole morning at the beach trying to look for a red snapper for Master Angler. When I finally got it, I ran gifts over to Morgan and Scarlet, who were now the last two I needed to finish friendship with. I smelted some more iron for crafting in kegs, then cleared out the mineral cave for the first time in a while. Didn't get anything useful though. On day 255, I made a few more solar panels to place on Ginger Island. I grabbed the wine crops whilst I was there, and since the next Wine Wednesday had already rolled around, that's what kept me occupied for the rest of the day, meaning we made another 1.3 million gold. Day 256 started with a gift to Morgan. Then when I went to give Scarlet some goat's cheese, I got a cutscene where she was helping out on Susan's farm. She asked me what I enjoy about being a farmer, so I told her it was the creative freedom I had on my property. This was food for thought for her, as it was her dream to own a farm too, and I'll be happy to give her tips when it comes down to it. That got me inspired to put that creative freedom to good use, as there were still areas of my farm not pathed yet, and at the very least it'll make things a bit more walkable. On day 257, I bought a blue armchair from the travelling merchant before grabbing a sports drink and a stamina capsule from Harvey, since this was the only way I could obtain them for shipping. With over 10 million gold, I could now buy the golden clock, placing it down by the alien rare grill. This is an area I'll decorate later. For the evening, I chilled out with some iron mining because I was still needing plenty of the stuff. Day 258 was a Skull Caverns day, as I was now low on Iridium, and it was a good luck day. You know what a Skull Caverns day looks like by now, so I'll just let you know that I passed out on floor 171, waking up the next morning with 382 Iridium ore and two more freaking auto grabbers. I swear, as soon as you stop needing something, they appear in abundance. I helped Scarlet with a project in her garage, and gave her an Iridium goat cheese for her birthday. For today's piece of decor, the travelling merchant had brought an indoor palm, which I'm sure I'll find a place for somewhere. After chasing Morgan down with a void egg, I asked Robin to build me a slime hutch, which, because I'd used up a lot of the farm space already, and this thing is large and in charge, I had a little trouble finding a spot for it. I ended up picking a spot in the animal pen and sacrificing some of the natural grass there, then placed down a path across the animal homes to the entrance to the slime hutch. On day 260, I was in the highlands slaying monsters hoping for a green mushroom to drop, but found out they only appear in the rain. I returned home to call on a rain totem because this was now one of the last things I needed for shipping. The other thing I needed was a Joja Fairy Rose, which is a mod adding fairy roses in Joja colours, but they didn't seem to have the seeds for sale, so I guess I'll have to wait for fall for these. Instead, I made crafting progress with the oil of garlic, but when I went to take a break in the saloon, Clint had to tell me he's a nice guy. Dude, if you're really a nice guy, you shouldn't have to tell me that. On day 261, Marlon was here to talk about my tractor's extended warranty. <laughs> On day 261, Marlon was here to tell me about my new slime hutch, and even gave me a green slime egg. I picked up the other slime egg I had, and I thought I'd made another incubator, but I accidentally made a slime press instead. Oh well, I did still need to do this for crafting completion. I also placed an iridium sprinkler because slimes need water to produce. I did return soon after though with that second incubator. The rain was now here, so I was back in the highlands again to slay a green mushroom, and thankfully, the first one I killed dropped what I needed. So now, all I have left is that Joja Fairy Rose. Okay, I lied. There was also the squid ink, but luckily I already had some of that. When I went to say hi to Morgan for the day, they told me that I was the only person who visits them at the tower. They wanted Jazz and Vincent to come visit them too, but their parents won't let them. Sounds like they were getting lonely here, and they seem to agree. Poor Morgan. At least they're thankful that we come to see them. Day 262 was another Wine Wednesday, and day 263 was the Luau. I spoke to Morgan and Scarlet for the friendship points, then I put in another Iridium Purple Mushroom in the pot for the third year in a row. Another reliable win from the governor. On day 264, my first slimes had hatched, so I refilled the incubators with purple eggs. I added more streetlights to the farm, then trekked up to Robins to ask for my final shed, which was set up in the spot we saved earlier. I overheard an argument between Scarlet and her father. I got scared and went to hide in a bush. 
Not very well, it seems. Turns out Scarlet has ADHD. Hey, me too. I love this representation. She talked about her struggles of focusing and listening, and with clearing up too. I totally get that, Scarlet. We know you're trying your best. She really needed a walk after all that, so I agreed to go with her. I was back in the decorating mood, so that afternoon I purchased more foliage from the Emporium and got to work placing it around the west side of my farm. I plan to also add some long grass here, but smaller areas like this will be little flower beds. On day 265, I accidentally gave Morris a Joja Cola again. No! I didn't care about that though, because today was a melon day. I replanted a new batch, then put over 1,700 melons in the shipping bin. But I did have to go back to Joja Mart for more seeds because I ran out again. I lost count of the amount of times I've miscalculated. When the planting was done, I added a few more crystallariums to the house for Jade. But I couldn't make any more because I ran out of gold, so I passed the evening mining for more. We got over half a million gold from all those melons. Then I started day 266 by handling a request for my midnight carp. It was also a new gifting week, so I brought a void egg to Morgan and some goat's cheese to Scarlet before picking up a gift for myself of a new picture for the house. Back on the farm, I started making some significant progress with crafting, getting the majority done that evening, leaving just a few stragglers, so I made a list of any missing pieces I still had to gather. On day 267, Sophia asked me to join her and Scarlett for a road trip that afternoon, but we both know I'm gonna forget today, so let's see when we actually end up going. I dropped another void egg to Morgan, then I wanted to go to see Robin, but accidentally used the wrong obelisk, throwing me into this cutscene. Alex tried to chuck a football to me, but I missed horribly. Listen, the eye patch affects my depth perception, okay? Anyway, back to Robin's, where I asked her to upgrade my first shed, because I needed to be able to repaint these to fit with the theme. Then, it was off to the volcano for the rest of the day to farm cinder shards to craft with. I used day 268 to gather bug meat and coal in the mines, but on my way home I found Morris struggling to look up the Joja Mart, so I decided to help. I asked why he was working such long hours, and he said that a dream doesn't become a reality if one isn't prepared to put in the work. Oh Morris, don't we know it. But then, he said he had a night shuttle to catch? Morris? Our home's in this town, where do you think you're going this time of night? We'll never know either because he really didn't come home. On day 269, I made what will probably be my last new kegs for Wine Wednesday. Then, it was on with the harvesting of ancient fruit and shoving them in all the kegs. Even though it was on my list, I forgot that the aged wine was done yesterday. But luckily, I had enough time left that night to refill those casks, making nearly 2 million gold. On day 270, I brought a final goat's cheese to Scarlet, making us official best friends. So now we just have Morgan, who has less than two hearts to go. I went cave foraging at Sprite Springs, then fulfilled a request for my golden fish pond, who were asking for 10 gold ore. Sophia and Scarlet kindly waited three whole days for me for the road trip. I am so sorry. Thankfully, they seemed more excited than mad, and we're off. After a long old drive, we arrived at the lighthouse where we climbed to the top to enjoy the view together. A lovely day out. When I got back to the valley, I went to say hi to Morgan when I walked in on a magic lesson. Morgan was having a little trouble with transmuting things, so I was asked to perform a demonstration. And hey, it seemed to have helped. I went home to clear out the coop, which had a lot of goodies built up in the auto grabber, but the barn one was much easier to handle. I then struggled through what I thought was left of the crafting, but still didn't get the achievement, so I must have missed something somewhere. But I left that for now and just refilled my machines. On day 271, I bought a random blue stall from the travelling merchant before using some magic bait to fish up the anglerfish a season early. This means I didn't have to wait for Master Angler. I never have to fish ever again. In this save file anyway. I made another 15 crystallariums, which I really didn't need, but I just wanted to fill out this room. All of these will be filled with jade. On day 272, I got the last star drop in the mail from Willy for having caught every single fish. This means this is sadly the last time I get to experience that unforgettable taste of Joja Corp. It was a pretty good luck day, so I decided to go to Skull Caverns just for funsies. And after passing out on floor 176, I woke up on day 273 with a random set of loot, but nothing particularly special. Some days mark the start of a new gifting week, so I took an Iridium Void Egg to Morgan. We were now so close to having this last one complete. I was almost out of coal again, so I made this a day of dust sprite destruction to keep my supply topped up. I got my second gift to Morgan done nice and early on day 274, and because I was so close now to finishing their friendship, I decided to bring Morgan to a movie. I'm not entirely sure why I hadn't leveraged the movie theatre earlier for building friendships. 
To be honest, I think it was because I forgot that this one is run by Joja, so I was actually allowed to spend gold here. Morgan seemed to have a good time, so that meant our last friendship was officially complete. Now, all I had left was the shipping, which I seemed to have forgotten when I went to check my percentage. Ah, Just one single Joja Fairy Rose, which made me nervous because I'd not seen the seeds yet and I had no clue if the mod was actually working, and would have to wait till 4 to find out. It seems I've also finished the crafting, but I can't for the life of me remember what the last item was. But hey, all that matters is that we've done it, right? On day 275, I planted some trees to be used as decoration, making sure to fertilise them for faster growth. I wanted to have one of the big sheds dedicated to growing tea and coffee, so I made a bunch of garden pots, although it was nowhere near enough because I ran out of stone. I visited Gil at the Adventurers Guild to collect my final rewards, but I was really here to see if I'd already claimed the Slime Charmer ring, which would make dealing with the Slime Hutch easier. I have, but I seem to have either lost or sold it. For now, I just set up a chest with my remaining slime eggs since I can't really rebuy the ring now. Then I finished off the decking area with some kegs I'd forgotten to place, and asked Robin for my final shed upgrade. On day 276, Morgan asked me to come along for their big test with the wizard down in West Cindersap. I left to go there immediately, though I turned the Cindersat forest into the Cindersat fields on the way. But when I got there, I got to witness the wonderful moment of Morgan calling upon some new wildlife friends. This was so freaking adorable, and they passed the test with flying colours. This was a welcome addition to another Wine Day Wednesday for another roughly 1.3 million gold. Day 277 marked the year's final melon harvest. As I was out of stone and it was a good luck day, I spent this one with copious amounts of explosives in Skull Caverns. It was weird being in here not looking for loot, but I did get mocked again with another auto grabber. I'm actually offended, but by the end of the day, I managed to gather about three quarters of a stack of stone. On day 278, I struggled through the slime hutch to incubate another two eggs and made a load more garden pots for the shed, but these still weren't enough. At least I could repaint them now to their final Joja form. This put me in the decorating mood again, so I thought that some fences here would be a nice touch, and I actually placed quite a lot of these around the farm. That was until I ran out of hardwood. On day 279, I sliced through loads of grass in my farm's hardwood area as I'd let it overgrow again. I was still in decorating mode, so I added some decorative plants and filled in some of the void space with long grass, which should spread over time. This continues into day 280, and I was really excited about how the farm was shaping up. I can't wait to show you the final screenshots later on. I headed to Morris's old house before the day was over to finally get that last warp in my nexus, dropping 5 million gold on the purchase of Aurora Vineyard, but that wasn't the response I was expecting. Morris! I tried to forget about that by going to the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. On day 281, Morris somehow teleported from inside the house to outside the front door to tell me that my purchase of Aurora Vineyard was now approved, and it will be refurbished overnight. You have no idea how relieved I was to see Joja Fairy Rose seeds in the mail from Shane. Since I was planning to use the whole farm for pumpkins, I'd be planting these on Ginger Island. Except when I got there, I forgot my hoe and my watering can. Let's try that again. I also used Hyper Speed Girl on one of them so I can ship it sooner. From there, it was off to Joja Mart to buy full price pumpkins because the last sale day kinda slipped my mind. But I did also look for those Joja Fairy Roses to see how much the seeds would have cost only to find they weren't for sale, so that mail really came in clutch. On my way home, Evelyn told me some things about my father, but I couldn't chat long because we had a farm to tend to. I shouldn't have had to worry though, because with the speed of the tractor, I had everything tilled, watered and planted within a few hours. I even had enough time to gather some more hardwood and give the golden clock some fancy crystal flooring. On day 282, Morris gave me a lobster bisque which I literally just gave straight back. I filled in some of the grass a bit thicker to speed things up, then took a little relaxing trip to Sprite Springs. Aside from incubating a couple of slime eggs, I didn't really achieve anything special this day. Day 283 was your run of the mill wine day, then on day 284, I got access to Aurora Vineyard, meaning I can make that final warp to my nexus. Morris was also here to welcome me which was nice, and officially handed over the keys. I went home to collect my tractor to help set the place up, and filled the entire basement with casks. Being close to the end of this series, this place wasn't really built to be practical, but I really wanted to turn this into a huge Joja Berry empire, so that's what I spent this entire day doing. Day 285 started with clearing out West Cinder Sap. I used that wood that afternoon to make paths between the rows of crops, and came back later that day to pave over the rest. I finalised the outside of Aurora Vineyard the next morning with some outdoor lighting, and for the inside I wanted to fill this only with kegs. 
I came home to find an abundance of wet truffles. Then out of nowhere, I remembered I could actually get some furniture from the house from the crane game, since this is a Joja establishment. These trees are some of my favourite decorations, but then I spent way too much time and money trying to get one of each of these pillars. You don't want to know how many attempts this took. I brought these pieces back to the farm and set up an area beneath the golden clock. This is where I wanted to use those snakes. On day 287, I placed most of that randomly accumulated travelling merchant furniture around the house. I didn't have much variety, so it ended up a bit of a mess, but you know what? I love it. This afternoon was for the mines because I was out of stone and coal again. On day 288, I added the last of the crystallariums to this room, so now it's officially finished. I gathered all the clay from Ginger Island's dig site, as well as the fibre from the jungle, using that fibre to fill in the grass on the island farm, because I learned that it doesn't seem to spread here. I was unfortunately still short of stone, so this was another afternoon in the mines, coming home that night with almost half a stack. George must have overheard, because on day 289 he sent me more stone in the mail, bless him. More importantly though, Ginger Island had graced us with our first Joja Fairy Rose, so I hastened to throw it in the shipping bin, and now we wait. I had to pass this time somehow though, so I harvested my truffles, visited Sprite Springs for some foraging, and went to look at the weird tower over at Grampleton Fields, but found nothing really of interest. Later that day, I got a cutscene with Susan, who I gave some encouragement to because she was doing great. Back on the farm, I tended to the slime hutch which was in desperate need of cleaning. Then I was happy to finally finish filling that shed with pots which were now ready for planting. Day 290 was a wine day Wednesday, but when I was on Ginger Island, I made sure to go check the perfection tracker. 100% <laughs> perfection, there it was. And as you can tell, I was pretty overjoyed. I didn't have time to celebrate yet though, because I wasn't giving up my wine day duties. On day 201, I woke up to some very special messages. You feel it in your heart. Somewhere, somehow, Grandpa is beaming with pride. The legacy of Thriving Farm is eternal. I started this special day right with a can of Joja Cola. Then it was straight up to the summit where Morris was waiting for me. He was the only person I could have hoped to see up there. But then, disaster. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dialogue. <laughs> Morris, are you okay? <laughs> but hey, I feel like in a way this is like an insight to my brain. The most perfect perfection if you ask me. I'm proud of us and everything we've achieved this series, but if you think this was the end, you'd be wrong. Oh no. The title says, I played 300 days of Stardew Valley Expanded, and that is what we shall do. My first post-perfection order of business was to pick up that statue I forgot about last time. Whilst I was still on Ginger Island, I wanted to get more cinder shards because there was some furniture I wanted from the island trader, but I lost track of time and passed out on floor 9. On day 292, I used those shards to obtain the double bed as a measly attempt to update the island house. I gave up on that for now and turned my attention to the last two cat statues from the casino. I didn't have enough key coins for the statue of treasure, so after buying the statue of endless fortune from the shady dude, I sat at the slots till I won big enough to take them both home. I set all the statues up next to my house. I'd never had the full collection before, and I love how these look together. On day 293, I continued to work on the tea and coffee shed, with the left half being for tea saplings, which I ran out of, and the right half being for coffee plants, which will stay watered thanks to the deluxe retaining soil. With an odd pot out in the middle, I add an extra joja berry. Now that perfection was achieved and the challenge was essentially over, I wanted to be able to freely decorate my farm, so I allowed myself to buy the flora and wallpaper catalogue and the furniture catalogue with the catch that I'll have to dump out items equal to their values. I got really lucky as well because I only just managed to catch Robin on her way out for the day. Goodbye to 200k worth of iridium bars and pineapples. The most important addition was making all the shed interiors Joja themed of course. Then I spent the rest of this day starting to put together a Joja themed cafe. Before I could continue to decorate on day 294, I had some pumpkins to harvest and replant. Then it was back to setting up the cafe. I wanted it to be welcoming but clearly run by Joja, and I spent the entire day on this place. On day 295 I started working on the last of the sheds. This one I planned to turn into an aquarium. The main idea that most of the tanks will contain an urchin wearing a different hat. Cute, right? Again, I spent all day on this project, and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Day 296 was the Stardew Valley Fair, and I wasn't about to miss the last one. I put an assortment of pretty valuable goods in the display, which was enough to wipe the floor with a competition for the last time. Day 297 marked our final wine Wednesday, and I'm gonna miss refilling this many kegs. 
On day 298, I picked up a wild load of truffles before collecting all my forgotten items from the fair. Whoops. I didn't care about most of them, I just wanted to put that gemfish in the aquarium. I collected the concerned ape mask from the volcano, which is one of the perfection rewards. But I still think the deluxe pirate hat suits me best. The reason I was on the island though, was to attempt decorating that house. I had a bit of trouble placing things exactly where I wanted them, so I settled on this bedroom layout before I called it a day. Despite the rain on day 299, I wanted to add more to the area beneath the golden clock, starting with some pathing, and proudly displaying the concerned mask on the alien rare crow, and then a place to sit in peace. With the tea and coffee shed still unfinished, I spent my penultimate afternoon in the mines farming for fibre, because this was the roadblock I hit with the remaining tea saplings. I thought I got enough by the evening, but annoyingly we were still lacking, so back to the mines I went. Day 300 started with placing those remaining tea saplings, but it was at that moment I realised I didn't have any windows in here, so these plants wouldn't be able to grow very well. There we go, that's better. The grass still hadn't spread as much as I wanted, so I bought a buttload of grass starters to fill in some of the gaps. But as I walked down to the south entrance, I realised this also needed a path. This was the last finishing touch I needed, so I chugged my last ever Joja Cola and rewarded myself with an early night. You know what comes next. Tour time! Starting with the house, we have the addition of some overflowed kegs. No children here, only wine. The rest of the interior is this ugly mishmash of random items, but I wouldn't change it for the world. The yard area isn't really any different besides some more furnaces, and the barn and the coop are the same too but the new addition here is the monstrosity named the Slime Hutch. Now here are our three new sheds, which in all honesty I'm really proud of. We got the tea and coffee shed, which didn't have much decorating. This was to supply our Joja Cafe, which gave me some good decorating practice. This is the perfect place to refuel before a trip to the aquarium, which displays some of the most unique and annoying fish to catch. The next new area was around the golden clock. I'd not really decorated a farm much before, and I was happy with how this turned out. The main crop fields were very much the same, as was the inside of the greenhouse. But above there, we have two new fish ponds, going for a natural overgrown look for the surrounding parts. Across the bridge were our obelisks, and our second oat resin farm. And since I didn't know what to do with the areas below, I filled it out with trees and flowers. Over to our ginger island farm now, which had the addition of new paths and solar panels. And I still don't want to talk about the house. The nexus was now officially full with all seven locations, which leads us over to Aurora Vineyard. The house is purely functional, only for wine production, and the outside was for our Joja Berry Empire. I'm sad that we couldn't get to see them all grown up, but I was happy I could bring this idea to life. Here's an overview screenshot of our farm in its final form, and wow, this really shows the sheer scale of the place. I never expected to enjoy a Joja run as much as I have, and really it's all thanks to the mods which are linked in the description. I highly recommend you give this a go at some point if you can. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit the like button. As you probably already know, these videos take a mountain of effort. I've also got other 100 days content on the channel, so if you like that kind of stuff, you should definitely subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey, and a special thanks to the members of the Berry Basket. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!